Welcome everyone to the Film Vault, guys, Anderson. I'm Brian Bishop, your host for today's top five. What is today's top five? Oh, unnecessary reboots. You might think, although it's an oxymoron, oh no, some reboots are great. We'll get into that in a little bit. Are they necessary, though? Well, what's necessary? No, no movie has ever been necessary to human survival. It's necessary that you get the show on the road and, and we, get, good, we get into that's it. A good that's point. very necessary. Good point. Hey, back in person, how are you feeling? You ever think about that? Like pretty much everything you love the most and enjoy other than, you know, like your other human beings and maybe pets is unnecessary. Yeah. Sometimes including totally. other human beings. Even like food, like, like, you know, the food that you like the most, unnecessary. You can live off berries. I think you can't. I think berries. About, uh, but I know what you're saying and I appreciate that and I agree. I think about that. What was the Charlie Hunnam movie with Mel Gibson that we watched? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a, last uh, Last Looks. Yeah, he was living in a in a Idlewild in a, a airstream. Home. He's I only own a hundred things. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I get away with that. Yeah. Probably less. If somebody gives him something that's he likes it, he has to go and find something <laughs> to chuck. I like it. That's good. One in, one out. Minimalism. Yeah, that's right. Minimalism. Hey, we're talking re fucking boots. Here's a here's a uh, a fun little challenge. Uh, maybe we go really really hard with the gambling. Make up for lost time. And uh, whoever loses like a, a set date, like we'll say like, this is the big one here. This is for all the, all the marbles. Whoever loses can watch nothing but reboots for an entire year. Oh, can you imagine? That, would that be, is brutal. Can that you would be bold. Uh, my, my list is lacking and for good cause. And I'm okay with that. And I feel comfortable you with simply that. simply haven't seen enough? I'm, I'm pleased with this. Yeah, I have not seen enough. Because 20 years ago or so, I was still naive, foolish, and excited for certain reboots. Like, oh. All I right. love this movie when a it new came out. All right. But they're going to get everything they got wrong. Get it right. And get it right. And it's gonna bring it usher it into That's a right. whole new generation. So the worst ones have come out since my my naive, naive days. And I, I believe I've sidestepped, wisely sidestepped most of them oh, angrily. That's right. Yeah. In fact, I, I realized I was doing my research. Many of the movies on my list have been talked about but one time on this show when I flick past them and never come up since because they're not good. This isn't really like a, a, an added value or service to the uh, to the listener. It might, it might be for some good pattern. Are you saying it's not necessary? I'm saying it's very unnecessary. Us naming movies that we hate that we wish weren't made, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite of the New Orleans funeral. I, I for the first two days, thought that we were doing... Um, Top five unnecessary sequels. I'm like, I guess it's been 10 years since we did that. Here we go. And I, I put together a pretty healthy list, only to find out that my uh, my learning disability strike again. Oh, and really? I, mis I misread reboot for sequel. Okay, so. so I'm glad, I'm very glad you segued in, into this topic, which is, listen, I'm aware that I'm not perfect, man. I'm not that a you're perfect not what? person. I'm a not perfect. a perfect person. Can't even say perfect. I, 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 I am imperfect in the way I pronounce the word perk. Mm. Perk. Perky. Perk, You're not a perky perk. man either. I'm not a perky man. Uh, I, I realize I have flaws. Mm. I realize I can be a bit you, pedantic at you, times. It's fun watching you run this runway. Where are you going? <laughs> I might be... Okay, this is going to be a bad example this episode. Why don't you use a good example? Of my uh, pedanticness. Uh, I'm going to be very... I, I'm going. It might not be actually. Pendastics. I'm going to be a stickler for reboots. Oh, now, geez. some people. <laughs> oh no! I, I saw some of the some of the nominations coming in on social media. Many of them remakes. Many of them sequels. Mm. Those will not be on my list. All right. These are reboots. The hard the definition of the word, which mm -hmm. is, there are movies that I'm sure will come up that are just sequels. There's mm -hmm. a continuation of the story. Right. A reboot is a restart. Telling the same story mm -hmm. again for some reason. It's it's, it's and it's, it has to be in my terms, in my opinion, a franchise, a franchise reboot. Uh, okay, I mean, now you're making new caveats. Like Dread is not a reboot. Dread just a straight remake. Oh, well, why can't that be a, re a rebooted? Because they're just remaking. They rebooted the you, movie. Because you don't reboot, you reboot a franchise. You can only reboot a franchise, that's so only I'm, franchises that's have boots. What I'm saying. Is it because there's many, many movies and they have like multiple feet and each one, right. need, one needs a boot? That's right. Is that what? You're no, re, you're a re reboot. Like shoeing a horse. A reboot is a rebooting this story, and they're not the main thing. The hey, main let thing. Let me ask you this. Is, I'm talking. They are not going to refer back to anything that happens oh. in that universe. That's what a reboot I, is. I, I Unless it's a prequel, then you might get in the same, and that's different from a that's reboot entirely. But no, a reboot can be just one movie, and they're like they're a little disappointed that it didn't quite get the. Uh, hey, hey, I'm talking. They think it, it didn't get off the ground and like you know lead to a bunch of sequels and whatnot. So, <laughs> what was your name? 
So they are rebooting that movie. It doesn't have to be rebooting a franchise. We're not doing this. franchise reboots. This. Bye bye. This uh, new Ghostbusters with uh, Paul Rudd. Yeah. Is that a reboot? No, it's a sequel. It's a sequel. 100%. Okay. What's the difference between a reboot and a remake? A, there's no difference. Remakes there's and reboots. No, what? I might be entirely wrong here. Let's let's get into this. Let's talk reboots, remakes. I just did. A remake is just a straight remake of a, of a movie. Like, so like uh, Psycho? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, actually, oh, Psycho Jesus Christ, had sequels. Taking your pal in one, two, three. Yeah, I believe they... Uh, no, but there's not, that's not a universe. That doesn't... That didn't have That's a remake. Sequels. That's a remake. That's a, that, that's, a, that's a reboot in my Assault mind. Assault on Precinct and 13. I, 13, yeah. That's a remake. Well, I have a problem with my list then because you just named two of them. Again, <laughs> again. <laughs> big, big problem with my again, list. I am acknowledging. I don't have five being whittled away. I am I might not have seen five reboots. I might I not have. I am going out on a, not on a limb, but I'm on an island on this. I, I assume the listener no, you, list I think you're right. lousy with remakes and sequels. I'm well, okay with that. I got, I got a bunch of remakes, uh, but I... I I've never really thought that much. I thought reboot was just a fancy word for the remake because they were doing so many of them. They're like, let's let's give this a catchier term. Perhaps you're correct. Perhaps or, or some remakes, uh, maybe some reboots turned into remakes because they went, oh, no one wanted that shit. Can't make a sequel out of that. Oh, interesting. Well, so is there an example? Like make? maybe if the the new RoboCop, they probably were hoping to make multiple. Safe. Mm. Uh, I never saw, so I there's no saving here. Safe. I saved myself by <laughs> not seeing the old. Save. Mm. Remake, like, remove. I, I've never predator, thought about it. The Predator universe is interesting because there's like Predators, which comes before, but it's kind of a prequel. And there's what's the one that Prey, they just come out with yeah. just another universe. So it's not really rebooted. It's the same universe. Well, then there's like Prometheus. No, it's that same universe. Yeah, Prometheus is a is, prequel. But then they yeah, went into Covenant and yeah. then they made, yeah. See, these are, they, 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 I guess, a little sticky when they're going uh, back and forth. Blade Runner 2049, straight sequel. Yeah, straight sequel. Right. They got they got the man in there. Right? He's old right now. There. It all lines up. Hey, uh, I, in my research, I found out about a whole bunch of uh, remakes slash reboots that I was not even aware of because I sidestep. I become I become enraged, Brian. I really do. I get very upset, <laughs> and you know it's an ongoing theme. In fact, last year I tried to limit my my intake. I think I broke it a little bit, but I tried to set a standard. What I, I would see no more than five remakes remake uh reboots sequels or, sequels, yeah. or yeah. prequels the entire no, the entire not year not just that i think i saw six you demanded we do a top five and we did yeah we did yeah it's 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 and listen i get it i understand it's a business you take a proven uh a product an that IP, people like an IP. ghostbusters makes perfect sense we were talking about it last week and like it's it's aimed at like me and my son and we're going to go and we did and it's a whole new generation sure to I, me, that's a straight sequel. The Paul Rudd Ghostbusters, it, the, the, the characters reprise the role. Yeah, you know it's a mean? sequel. That's what I said, right? Yeah. What are, I thought we got in a fight about that a minute ago. I said I it's a sequel, it, and right. you, you said, oh, no, it's not. Oh, no. Uh, we did. Uh, we agreed. It was over the remake versus reboot thing that we didn't see. Was the girl on. one uh, considered a, a reboot? Safe. Oh. And then, oh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else that was amazing. It was amazing, whatever I was going to say. It was insightful, in, insightful enlightening. I uh, might have changed some lives. And now oh, it's shit. Gone. We got to find it. <laughs> and then the well, recesses are in mind. Well, is this the right most right. uh, number of top fives that we've spoiled before uh, a single I quick was Yeah, I think, I think we might be uh, <laughs> setting. Hey, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time because there's not a whole lot of value here. Hopefully there's some value in our, our flick fashions. Which That's is, a good thing to tell right. listeners up front. Hey, we're going to have some fun patter. That there's I can not, tell you. There's not a whole lot of value coming up. There's not. I, mean, I don't <laughs> like to do these negative. I was... I was hard pressed. I don't know if I can name five reboots that I've seen now that I hear the qualification. Really? I don't so know. far, three, uh, two of my five have been revealed. <laughs> two of my five have been revealed. <laughs> and there's no crossover on those four. Four out of the ten have been revealed. <laughs> Maybe and I'm sure we've touched oh. on something for the listener list as well. You, you definitely have seen uh, more reboots than you think. Might as well talk about it now. There are good reboots. Lest anyone out there think we're just haters or we're just old ass hipsters and we hate everything new and I fuck all the reboots. No, no. There are many good reboots. Are there? Tom the, Holland Spider-Man. What? The, yeah, Tom Holland Spider-Man. That's a reboot. That's a reboot. Just telling the story again? No, because they tie them all together and then we got the old uh, Tobey Maguire there and the old okay. Garfield. Okay, with the... With it's the, all the same universe. With, with, I will... Uh, Oh, they were in that iteration. Right, really, of that you really sequel. checkmated us there. That was really interesting. But <laughs> it started out as a straight reboot when they first introduced the Tom Holland. Character. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Changing lives Let here. You're ready? Okay. The, the Nolan's right. Batman movies. Mm -hmm. Straight reboot. 
I guess you're right. Yep, they're great. They're, they're on my list. Fury Road. Fury Road is not a no. No. Rebooting the series. No. They're bringing the series back, but it's still Mad Max. It's the same dude. It's a different character. It's not a different, different character. actor. It's a different actor. But so one what the is fuck? That it's a reboot and it's good. The it's not a reboot. You cannot say Fury Road is a reboot. The X-Men movies. Nay, 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 nay. Well, the okay. X-Men movies are prequels. Uh, wait, is, are they all? Yes, they are. My head is hurting. Well, I guess when they crossed over with like you know uh, Days of Future. Past. Oh no! But they were all yeah. They were all they were prequels. Geo Timelines from the conceptions. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Giovanni, super fan Giovanni. I can hear you clickety clacketing. I don't care. I don't. Please stop typing. I don't want to hear the lineage of every reboot that is the uh, the Marvel universe. Okay. I would argue that Superman Returns is okay. Is it a reboot? Yeah. He returns. He's returning from what? No, that's not a reboot. I guess that could be a sequel. It's a Seeks. Mm. And I have seen it, so uh, it could have made the list. It's not good. I'm Man good. of Steel. Man of Steel. Ca- no, that's a pretty bad, actually. Okay, okay. Here's what I was going to say. Here's a change in lives, all right? Uh, part of me dies when I see, it's like seeing The Matrix a little bit, and you're sitting in the theater, and you see a trailer come, and, and, you, and it's, just, it's just like pow, right in your, right in your mouth. That's not wrong. But like the new one with the fall guy, which doesn't but it's look not bad. That far That's off. a fun trailer. The fall guy the, looks the like they're doing it right. Off the fun skin. But that formula is so old and tired sure. and simple. And it's not a movie that I don't of all the creators, if all the creators in the world were to be put in one massive arena and they all get an idea that they get to make. I think maybe a handful, maybe maybe a dozen of them want to make the fall guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they know that the people want to see the fall guy because of numbers. Because I want to see the you fall got guy. the dudes that are going to want to go see it, that's and right. they got the ladies that want to go see it. Right. So that's the formula they're it's looking got that for. Hot, so, sex, yeah. But if hot, you were to take sexy, every yes, storyteller in the like, world, what? how many of them, if they're given carte blanche, you can tell whatever story you want. How many of them are going to like say fall, fall guy? guy. I don't think very many. Right. You're probably see what I'm saying? So but that, we live that in the real world. We do live in the real world. And the people do want to see that. It, I want to see it. I want to see it too. How, how about the others that came out? Uh, just there was one that came out. I think Channing Tatum. We missed that one entirely. Oh, but no, the I one with Brad it. Pitt. The uh, the Lost City or something with uh, Sandra Bullock. Wasn't that the Brad Pitt one? Yeah, yeah. maybe that was. Yeah, it was. but there was another one that came out since then too, where it's just the same no. formula. Oh, it was. It was yeah. Allison Brie. Was it? She Allison was in Brie? one. Allison Brie and somebody else yeah. was Mo- in one. It's just such a, it's such a, but the Brad Pitt, obvious, Channing Tatum, yeah, that Tatum one Baldwin. didn't really hit. I think there was like one or two things that actually it's were kind of funny. Star movies, fun, but you know, ultimately disposable. All right. Speaking of movies and disposable, I shot. Do we do that? I sh- what's that? Do we talk movies? Oh, well, we've been talking movies nonstop. Where you been? Hey, right. One of the movies left and right. Huge news on the uh, the cold cockle front, umbrella pictures front. I uh, I shot. Is Godzilla the- minus one a uh, reboot? Of course not. There's, well, did I you haven't see, seen the movie. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of... Uh, the new uh, yeah, I guess it could be considered a reboot. It's like the first time we've ever seen Godzilla. I think so, yeah. yeah. No, it is a reboot because they plan on doing sequels. See? But also what they're telling scene? the origin story again, right? Like yeah. Godzilla yes. emerges from this the This is the scene. first time they've seen Godzilla in that universe. Okay. And it seems like it's the first time Godzilla has seen anything as, as well because his eyes are wide throughout the entire movie. <laughs> He's just like checking out the. He's like, you fuckers are up here. <laughs> His eyes are so wide. You saw it, right? I did not. Well, Get the fuck out of here. Imagine Please. how surprised you'd be if you're under the ocean for your whole life and you're like, whoa. Yeah. This whole is all well, up the here. Mines, the mines of the fishing ship. Holy shit. Once again, that's good say stuff. It's, oh, no. You're good about cold cockle. Oh, oh, really? oh, yeah. Big, big day. Big, big day in the old uh, cold cockle world. Uh, I finished almost six months later. Today I completed principal photography hey. on Loaded for Bear, the short, which uh, nice. we shot back go. in October. We shot it. What did you shoot? Pickups? And then no, not even pickups. No, I don't. I don't, I don't do pickups, Brian. Shoot? That's for amateurs. Uh, no, I shot the last 15 seconds, which I had scheduled for day of shoot, but I knew full well there was a good chance we weren't going to get to it. Got to it today. It only takes 15 seconds. That's how it works. <laughs> I got to it today. Did the shots. And uh, I'm very excited. Now I just have to cut it together and nice. stack. Uh, it's the last. It's the final reveal. There's many, many reveals in the uh, the short film. Very, very meta. But I thought I was going to have to play the character. And lucky for me, last minute, I recast it. All right. Yeah, because I don't like to be in my own shit. You know what I'm saying? Understood. Yeah, Opposite it of Shyamalan. And it was just, Shyamalan. I got to tell you, that $50,000 day, that $50,000 day that we shot in October, uh, Loaded for Bear the Short, and I had, I don't know, there was maybe 130 people on set at, one, at any given time. You were lot. there. Yes, we had two, unnecessarily. 
two no necessary two separate Panavision packages going simultaneously. It was nice. a lot of moving parts. It was exciting. It was invigorating. The day went by like that, like it always does on on shoots. Uh, however, that said, today working with just my uh, my DP and, and Milan Janison and Mike Carano uh, being my wingman and just the three of us having a space and composing shots and, and dressing the set was probably about as invigorating. I, right. fucking, I love it. It's such a different world, but I love that side of things. That's great. I love doing it that way. What are people going to be able to see some of this? Uh, do, 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 do. What do you hope God to have knows. a trailer? Well, God do you knows. have a trailer for a short? I'm not going to do a trailer for a short. It seems pretentious. It does. It seems trite. Um, but I have done it before. <laughs> Let me be fully full frame. Uh, no, it's, uh, it'll be doing you know festival uh, runs and whatnot. And I'll probably uh, do, a, do a, some kind of screening somewhere to uh, raise some money and awareness for the, uh, the, the, the big one. So, what if and, you and I end up in the same festival? That'd be, that'd be fun. Think we bunk together? Just I hope you don't catch me like uh, hissing. Oh, my movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the old-timey hipster hissing? Oh, it's uh, hissing. I hope not, too. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's get to it. making it all up. The man doesn't have cancer. He's just carrying around too many headshots. Show me the scans. <laughs> Show me the CAT scans. You know, it's not CAT scans, actually. It's, it's a CD scan. Oh, Christ. There it was. I knew it was right there. <laughs> actually, we we'll get MRIs. I like that you set him up and still got angry when it happened. I didn't get angry. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're doing batting practice. You're mad that he hit it out of the park. I would yeah. be mad about that, yeah. Because it, it, be, it wouldn't be the ball coming off the bat and going over the wall. It would be the look of satisfaction on his face, yeah, which is insufferable. Did I ever show you? Oh, oh my god, you, I, this is so, this this would be so great. Did I ever show you the home video of me circa nineteen ninety? You know what? One hundred hitting a home run, little league, and like, nay, a grand slam, yes. walking to first base. Yes, yes, yes. You did show me that. Ever? And it. it, it <laughs> We gotta we gotta put that online. People need to see it because I mean that is just all encompassing of what I see. And, but it's a twelve year old pudgy version of you. That's just that, true. It was it was if the, bad flips had existed, Brian would have done five yeah. of them. No excitement. It's true. No oh, it's world. Yeah. No excitement. No like oh, I can't I believe this is happening. He, just just total like of course. <laughs> He, it's one of those. Like that's what I did. Of course it I did. It was so smug. Oh my god, so smug, Brian. <laughs> did you study smug and say that's what I'm going for, or did it just come natural? No, no, totally natural. Totally. Did, <laughs> obviously not Savant. planned. Savant. Yeah, uh, nature not urgent. My son is a natural smug. Like it just comes naturally to him. I launched that ball <laughs> out of the park and then immediately dropped the bat. Just, just admired it. Walked for looking at the ball the whole time. You know, it, it was the same reaction as you would have if you just, you know, or a catcher throwing the ball back to the pitcher. Like, yeah. you know how the catcher does nothing, like no reaction yeah. because yeah. there's no reaction to be it's had. Just, yeah, it's rote. Rote. All right. Hey, let's get to the program. I'm going to find the video. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, where, where do we go here from here? Do you want a little fan fiction? Uh, of course I do. A little fan fiction. What We're going to talk about uh, fan fiction is what the, uh, the fans have seen. The listeners. Fan fiction. <laughs> Compiled by Mike Cole. Mikey, Mikey boy, the great and powerful Mike Cole, Brian McCauley on Facebook saw better Brian, better Brian. We're doing next week. <coughs> we're doing uh, better Brian's uh, topic. He is the decider oh. next week, and it will be very are esoteric. Are, they, are these his movies that we're flukasing fluk this week? No, 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 that's Stephen Morris. Okay. And next week we're going to be doing better Brian McCauley's um, uh, top five decider list. He decided because he is uh, at the Patreon level that he decides. I like his topic as esoteric as it is. It's going to be in honor of, in celebration of the Stanley Cup playoffs beginning. Uh, we are going to be doing top five. Uh, we're going to be filling out hockey teams with uh, hockey positions with our, our characters. That makes okay. sense if you're making the best team possible from all of the characters in, in every movie you can imagine. This just in. Hmm. I found the video. Okay, I was hoping this this just then would be on something I was talking about with Better Brian's uh, top five. To be fair, you were just talking about this. That's right. When? About five Before minutes then, ago, yeah, the baseball, the grand slam, yeah. we're yeah. switching. Okay, well, how are we supposed to see it? No one can see it. We don't. We don't work. Oh, there I am. In a news station where you just pop this up. This feels and, like this could be all fair. Yeah, I know, Brian. You can't. You can't handle your clips. Okay, let's let's get back to <laughs> fan fiction. Brian, we can't hear it. Audio. Audio. Mike Cole. It doesn't. It doesn't transfer with audio. Your silent smugness. Brian, come on, have some instincts. Let's go. Oh, Brian okay. McCauley on Facebook. I Better, Brian. You know what? Next week we're gonna be. <laughs> I walk forty-four. Saw. Yes. 
Monkey Man. Monkey Man. Monkey. He's a man. It's, He's a man. Solid, it's a solid. Uh, it's a solid action revenge movie. Dev Patel did a great job directing and starring. I had a few issues with the story. Probably could have cut 15 minutes, including very heavy-handed foreshadowing, drama-based cliches, loose ends and leaps in logic. Overall, though, it was very well shot, well acted, well choreographed. Last 30 to 40 minutes were a lot of fun. You think there were leaps in logic? No, that's how people fight in the real world. JJ Klee on Instagram also <laughs> saw Monkey Man. Monk. Could have used some editing, but after letting it sit a while, it still worked. Saw parts that reminded me of Roadhouse and Enter the Dragon. Stylistically, it was very similar to Danny Boyle. Uh, I've never heard of her. And Slumdog Millionaire. Mm -hmm. Also, I uh, need to mention the Solid Score soundtrack. Score was pretty good. Do you want to guess the uh, FVT score for Monkey Man? I'm going to say 100 because it sounds like it's 100. I'm going to say 100 too. I don't think anyone dislikes this. 100 for the Monkey Man. Fail, fail, fail PH. On Reddit, I went into the first Omen with very low expectations and was pleasantly surprised. It looked great, had some crazy visuals, and the scares were effective. Which one's this? The first Omen. Gotcha. Film fan 90 on Reddit, the first Omen is an almost awesome movie. Hmm. There are many good scares. However, there are also some cheap jump scares. Mm -hmm. Many times I was laughing when I wasn't supposed to be, and the score is obnoxious. Mm -hmm. Horror fans will enjoy this, as I did to an extent, but it seems a little too in love with itself. This is a reboot, uh, prequel? Prequel. What we got here going? Okay. So prequel. It's, it's straight it's prequel. It's pre-Damien. Yes. Ah, straight prequel. Give what? me Damien and oh, give me yeah, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know you he like might, your, He might make an appearance. You like your omen. He might make. He's he might. in the womb, though. He's in your Do you see You see wombs? <laughs> You see things come out of wounds. All, Alex, all for you, Damien. That this may or may not all be for you. That may or may not be uttered in the film. Oh, yeah? Oh, nice. Yeah. I love that. Oh, creepy yeah. ass shit. Oh, yeah. So creepy, Brian. You seen the original? No, I'm not. Get the fuck out of here. There's some troubling things that I will oh, never unsee in this yeah, movie. Yeah, in this movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some troubling things. Right? There's things coming out of vaginas. Alex oh, Essington great. on Facebook. Oh, you see it all. Alex Essington on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> the Promised Land, a.k.a. Bastardin. Fuck yes. Fuck to the yes. Solid revenge movie yes. with a great villain. Yeah. It does feel like there will be blood at times, but if you're expecting anything on that level, lower your expectations. Anderson oversold this one a bit. Oh. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Uh, let it sit. Let it sit. Let it simmer. Let it sit. Because no, it's it's a it's a little bit off base to be saying uh, there will be blood, but I mean the comp is there. But yes, very yeah. different movies, and there They're will be blood is like an instant classic. Even though it took me like yes. two full weeks to realize that I saw it, so Jesus. I, it's one of my all time favorites. That said, this movie fucking lands. Mm. Promised Land is a bastard. Oh, it, sets, it sets out what it, what it aims to do. Yeah, six months from now, you're still going to be uh, a really loving bastard. Bastard. I mean, just the name alone gives it at least a half star. Agreed. Best Arden. He also saw The Innocents from 2021. Oh, did I oversell this one too, son of a bitch? Everybody is a superpower. You have a superpower. She is a superpower. He is a superpower. Seriously, this is a very solid thriller with some of the best act child acting I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I don't quite understand the fuck yeah moments Anderson talked about, and I thought the villain was a tragic figure. Okay, well, the, the fuck yeah moments, for those of you who have seen The Innocents or are going to see The Innocents, I'm not going to give anything away, but it happens towards the... I want to say the middle of the movie, maybe the end of the second act, and it's when an unlikely hero uh, arises and takes care of business, and uh, that is the fuck yeah fist pump moment. Uh, however, I wish that it was timed uh, at towards the end of, of the movie, and that could have wrapped things up. I, and I, I'm not really sure that I love the structure of this movie, mm. uh, but I did love the premise and, and how they put it together for the most part. Curtis Hilms. The Innocence. Uh, it's, a, it's a Swedish uh, horror film from two years ago. 2021, yes. Curtis Helms on X saw The New Mutants. Pretty good. I like the small scale story where we just get to spend time with the super characters. Isn't this supposed to be really bad? A fun look at mutations as coming of age stories we haven't really seen in the movies before. I'd love to see more like this in the future. Sorry, but. And lastly, Cody Horton on it's Facebook saw 20 Days in Mario Pole. One of the most depressing pieces of media I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But still important and a well-made film. I agree with all that. Also saw the documentary Hendry, which yeah. was a really pleasant surprise. Doesn't dwell much on Phil's life at all, but uh, really does a great job of breaking down his career through interviews and animation. Very brief, but very good. I Need agree. I, I would have liked a little more life, but uh, enjoyable. Need to see that, Hendry. I saw the first Omen. Oh, moment. yeah. Oh. Kick it off. Let's go. How was the Omen? <sighs> the first Omen was it was kind of ruined a little bit because I had seen Immaculate and they definitely rhyme. There's a lot of overlap thematically with, that. Same universe. with Immaculate with Sydney Sweeney from a couple. 
that I saw last week. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yes, that okay. just gave me, yes. But how are you connecting these two dots? They're very similar thematically if you see the movie. Okay. They're very, very similar. Where it's nuns dealing with trauma. Oh, okay. And possible pregnancy. Mm. Uh, a lot of very, very similar beats to the point where I feel like I, I wish I had just not seen Immaculate because yeah. it took, it almost felt like I knew what was going to happen unfairly mm -hmm. with the first Omen. Uh, I would say a solid three and a half stars. Very scary. Very effective. Loved the way that this was shot. Really upsetting, trippy visuals. I feel like it was a, cr a pretty crisp, like, hour 50. Uh, the main actress was absolutely phenomenal, mm -hmm. and she delivered a very even performance. Some of the writing, I feel like um, Charles Dance is in it briefly for a cameo. Charles Dance? Yeah. Oh, from, I like uh, that guy. He, that guy. He's, he just, he's, he's just in the beginning, which, which is a bummer. Yes, he's Sounds still like he alive. Is, he was just in a movie. <laughs> I guess you could die afterwards. And the yeah, dad... Right. Uh, it was filmed six months ago. Yeah. The dad from The uh, the Witch with Anya Taylor-Joy yes, from yes. the... Uh, he's... And Black Phillip. Don't he, forget Black Phillip. You can't talk about The Witch without talking about Black Phillip. He is criminally wasted in this movie. Oh, Wes he Anderson is, might have directed that scene. not given a ton to do despite how just great his voice is and how phenomenal he is for, for that role. It's a 70s period horror piece, which I always love when there's horror movies set in a different time period. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fun to be had here. Uh, I will agree with the listener who said it does take itself a little too seriously. Uh, but I think for the most part, it sticks to landing. I don't know if it transcends enough for the masses to go see this. If you like horror at all, absolutely go out and see this, preferably in a theater. Uh, really, really good visuals. And like I said, a really good uh, performance from Nell Tiger Free, which I, I hate that that's her name. I, I like that name. It's not a Nell good name. Nell Tiger Free. You got to free that tiger. <laughs> Nell Tiger Free. Here's, here's the thing, Avery. Uh, I'm going gonna to counter with uh, the, not a big horror guy. Yeah, here, nor is Brian. Uh, life, kind of too short considering how many movies that are out there in the in the world to watch a to run to a three and a half star movie. Should one see it's, the Omen first? Yeah, Brian, one hundred percent. It's there are some great visual. There are some things in this movie that I will I will never forget. Right. There's some comparisons that I can't make because it would give away too much of the plot. Uh, but uh, it was it was startling. It was troubling, and. Uh, I like that original. I enjoyed moment. it. As, as as corny as it can be, all these years later, it still has a, a wallop. And uh, maybe the best thing about watching The Omen is you can call your friends and family's children, uh, Damien, if they act out, and mm -hmm. it will upset them. Yeah, this was not uh, not corny. This was very much <laughs> swinging for the fences. It, it took itself too seriously. Swinging right? for the fences, and uh, a lot of times it connected, but not always. Speaking of swinging for the fences, Brian did that. <laughs> and... <laughs> no, we're not watching this on Christ. the show, Brian. Brian. Right, we're not. <laughs> Christ. I love it. Here we go. That's me. Oh, now it's yes. We're all watching. Oh, there it is. <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, the nerd half step. Okay. I forgot. I it's know. Else has seen it. Like, is that happening? It actually, it was. It was bewilderment. Like, Do you think people are watching me? Now that I see it again, you're is like, the you, crowd you, with me? You can't believe that you're seeing it. Like, you were kind of like dream walking. I really, I really was. I like, was like, I this, should run. Did this just happen? Like, he does like a little half step. Oh. You gotta post that thing. Do you know how to post things on YouTube? You ever no. done that? Three point seven five stars. I'm taking oh, it back. Okay, all right. It's, it's my home video. When it's when it's clicking, <laughs> when it's clicking on all cylinders, it is very scary and very effective. It could have used one more pass, and this could have easily been a four star movie. Uh, Omen is done. It's We're done. Good. We're moving past. I'm it was enjoyable. Swinging for the fences. That's okay. the same way. Hey, did we even announce in the, the program what we're going to be uh, flick festing today? We're going to be fl no. flick festing two very highbrow. Mm. Uh, French films that can only be viewed on Criterion. And then we're Actually, taking a hell of a left turn. Thank you to Stephen Morris, who uh, assigned us not one, but both of those French movies. And that is uh, Jean de Florette, as well as... Jean. Jean de Florette. Uh, Jean. Uh, as well as uh, Maron, Maron of the Spring. That's right. Maron of the Spring, which is the sequel, not the reboot. The uh, straight-up sequel came out the same year, too. It's it rare that we do... It's rare that we do back-to-back -back movies. Thank God. I was talking to Steven earlier today. Thank God we didn't do the first and then the other one six months later because these this is a two-part. It demands to be watched quickly. It's a very long movie is what it is, with one, it part is. A and part B. And uh, we'll get Brian's thoughts on that in a bit, but I would have never watched either one of these movies uh, if it wasn't for being uh, assigned and paid to do so. And boy, am I glad Steven did did so. so. Can I tell you? Hmm? Took your advice? Yeah. Watch it with your mom? Watch the mom. Yeah? Well, the first one. Yeah? Yeah. She's only here for uh, the weekend. Did she enjoy? Safe. Okay. And then we'll also, we're, we're going to be talking a little monkey. monkey what, is, what is that? 
monkey man. Uh, it's what I'm calling Kong versus uh, Godzilla, uh, we, X Kong. Uh, Godzilla. Let's race this. Godzilla we could have what? watched both, but we ended up watching my home run video. You're back to talking video. about your mom That's right. and your, your home run video. Is that going to be an ongoing <laughs> theme throughout the entire goddamn episode? Is your goddamn home run? We'll find out. <laughs> I think we already have. What else swung for the fences? First omen. <laughs> Would you? First all right. Omen? So omen and Brian's grand slam as a twelve-year-old is that that's going to just dominate this entire episode. <laughs> They're comparable. Mm -hmm. Could have been better. Hey, Avery, it's like that was my home run video. Parts, to, parts to like, parts to hate. Hey, will you please share that with Avery so he can post it, or share it with Drake so he can post it? We need to post. Oh, this Drake thing. needs to bank that into a reel. Yeah. Yeah, that used to be like yeah. Um, Slow down. Study. You already have the tumor, you think, when that was happening? <laughs> Probably. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at the beginning when they make a Marvel movie and they have all the clips, you know, going into yeah. the Marvel letters. That needs to be one of those, but for the film ball. Yeah. <laughs> hey, for the, uh, <laughs> for the Patreon this, this month, maybe that could be our watch along. We'll just watch that for an hour and a half. <laughs> I'll pick it apart. Hey, we will watch it once. How about that? I'll share the screen this will make on Zoom. Least. That's um, pretty good. We're going to watch it on the Zoom watch that along. That was the week, city championship game. I don't give a fuck. No. Yeah, I don't care please. even a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Why are we talking about this? Because we ended up losing the game, um, but partially because I committed an error in left field. What are you? You're trying to like you know walk back the smugness? No, or? no, the smugness exists. I'm trying to uh, even it out. In your I mind. played in all city. Oh god, now you got me going down this road. See? I played in all city, all Los Angeles like county, maybe uh, championship basketball game when I was like nine or ten. We were fucking good. We were really good. Yeah, black guys. And then we went to. Uh, I think it was Baldwin Park. I don't remember where we played. And I remember, I'll never forget the score. The score was 44 to 2. We lost. Yeah. <laughs> oh we came in mass. second. We came in second. <laughs> fucking poster. In the, in the city or the county or whatever. But we, we it was A 44 to 2. single hoop. It was me. I, I scored the hoop. Really? But it was 44 to 2, bro, bro. Jesus. Yeah, That's yeah. rough. I, I remember feeling weird bringing home that trophy. I'm like, did I really earn this trophy at all? I hope you won most valuable player for that. 44 game. to 2. They didn't yeah. do most valuable player when you get beat 44 to 2, right? The two almost makes it seem more pathetic than if we just got completely shut out. Yeah. yeah. The two makes it. Because if it's 44 and nothing, you're like, well, what happened? Was there a, a locust or an injury or something? <laughs> Were there five two, like, locusts? <laughs> <laughs> Were there five cardiac events at the same time? All right, let's let's do Monkey Man. Let's do Monkey Man. Pow, pow. Monkey Man. Brian, set her up. Monkey Man. 2024 film directed by Dev Patel. Dev. Also, the co-writer and story by... He's all starring, in on this. Starring the aforementioned Dev Patel as the titular Monkey Man. Oh, Christ. Peter Wash. Uh, he goes by Peter Wash. Uh, <laughs> Co-stars. Uh, fuck these names. Uh, Vipin Sharma. Mm. Sikander Kerr. Uh, Sopita Dulipala. Mm -hmm. Dulipata. Mm. Dulipala. All right. And Ashwini uh, Kalekar. Mm-hmm. Kalikar. Kalikar. Mm. Also starring this. 88% of Ron's made up. This is in theaters That's now. A big smack. No bus service following. Um, yes, there are elements of uh, John Wick and also uh, reminiscent of uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Self admitted right? elements of John Wick. Well, I oh, mean, yeah? seeing Deb yeah. in there and it right. being primarily. No, no, no. Uh, but he said in the movie, he goes, Is yeah, the gun John Wick uses? Yeah, they do. They do oh, refer to John sure Wick. Now, before. Right. before just get on that mic, would you? What are you new? Uh, before we get any any farther He's down. He's admiring his ball stuff. First, yes, right, I'm the the Just in case I forget, because that, that would be a damn shame and I'd be exactly very upset. A grand slam. Be, uh, be really upsetting on my way home if I forgot to mention this little factoid. Uh, while watching the movie, towards the end of the movie, I was getting really heavy Only God Forgives vibes. That's interesting. I thought the same thing. Back on the mic. I thought uh, the same thing. Nicholas Winding Reference Only God Forgives with uh, Gosling that came out a number of years ago That's now, right. which we didn't love. Very Neither one of us loved. Quite forgettable, actually. But as I'm thinking that, and, you know, it's probably like the last five minutes or so. I'm like, that's what this is really hitting on. I'm glad you mentioned that because I had that thought in the theater. Did you pick up on um, maybe the last line of the movie or one of the last lines of the movie? No, I don't think so. Only God for, can forgive you. He says these words as I'm thinking only God forgives. And it was bizarre. Oh, I pick up on that. It was bizarre. I don't know if that was, if that if I'm reading into that or if it was a direct, like, mm. not, I don't I mean, know. I mean, he already tips the cap to John Wick. He so does I wouldn't to be John surprised. Wick. I wouldn't does. be surprised if he had a little tongue in cheek for the uh, cinephiles there. So what do you think? What you, you like this? You see, you didn't see the monkey man. Oh. You're over there toiling with the I old. Saw, uh, oh, you saw the monkey. I saw fucking monkey. Man. Okay, all right. Oh, Sounds like some like shit in Dolby. All right, okay. I think there's a good movie in there. I was gonna say this. Uh, I don't know if I saw it. Was okay. it really? Yeah. 
Really? I'm saying really, yeah. Wait, you think it's a bad movie? I think there's a good movie in there. I don't know if I saw... I, I wish... I wish it was something. There was something there. I'm, sh- I'm shocked by this. Okay. Yeah, this feels. I'm shocked. Really? Almost like how could someone dislike this? I don't dislike. No, the no, movie. no. But I thought you were going to come in here just singing its praises. No, yeah. no, this is not an Anderson movie at all. Really? Well, still, the Godzilla by Kong is. No, you're right. That's true. But it's, it's like RRR meets John Wick. It's not RRR. Take those fucking filthy words out of your mouth. That's so untrue. You're, right. you're being racist because you're saying it's Indian people right. doing action RRR. This movie does not feel RRR oh, at all. Right. Okay, listen to me. Here's what I was thinking throughout the movie. I've seen all of this before, except for some of the stuff I saw in the ring when he actually was Monkey Man. I would have liked that to be the entire goddamn movie. Mm. His rise and fall or how he's just getting by by doing this weird uh, Monkey Man character in this fighting ring. Like, I didn't need all the other stuff. And I really, and a lot of it was lost on me because there is a layer of politics that is lost on, I think, all of us because we don't live in India. We don't know all the strife and things that are going on with the Muslim sure. world. And there's a lot, there's a whole layer of subtext there. Not even subtext, it's right in your face that is not really resonating with us because we're just lost on it. We're ignorant to it. Now, let me say, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I liked it more than you. That said, I do agree with you. There were many, many times where I was like, oh, this reminds me of such and such. Like the Raid and the Raid Redemption, or the Raid Redemption and the Raid 2. I was it's like, a composite yeah. of all these these yeah. uh, revenge uh, kick-ass but, movies that we've seen before. But I'll, I'll, When I say I'll, kick-ass, I mean like they're going to kick ass. I'll not pivot they on do this kick. and say a movie that we both like, which is Edge of Tomorrow, was just versions of many movies we had seen, but it was a new twist. Though. It was well done. No, we have never seen anything like Edge of Tomorrow. I could just write on the surface. The, the, the hero is a total fucking coward. I mean, we've never seen that before. Uh, all right. Hey, what, what, what do you mean? Sure, I've, the fact that he keeps coming back, think. he keeps coming back. Yeah. We haven't seen that before. And he keeps like trying to avoid death because he's terrified of death because he's a little wimpy sure. baby. I, I don't want to get Never how much that. enjoyed that movie. I'm just saying this one had enough new stuff, which was taking all those elements and putting them in a very interesting cultural setting. I, I bought in. I, I like the it. cultural setting. Obviously, that was that was refreshing and new. That said, I don't know if I saw anything terribly new. Even the monkey stuff wasn't necessarily new but i liked all the stuff in the ring i wanted that to be the world and i got a little tired of him infiltrating and trying to get to the top to mm-hmm. get his vengeance on wicked dudes i that really was, my heart was not in block it. 99, this is shocking to me my heart was not in it i didn't that really was care block 99, the bad guys were so bad and one-dimensional i i five starred this shit wow i was blown the fuck away why were you blown away i almost i had an anderson moment where i almost teared up from the goodness of what really? i was seeing really have you not seen joe i've seen all of them I thought that you this like the things John that John Wick had not done. I thought this was extremely inventive. I loved how visceral and raw the way it was shot. Hmm. That a lot of the ways that they framed shots, the way that was done, was very only, striking and immediate. Only God forgives. Hadn't seen that. Yeah, you seen it. didn't see that. Yeah, I saw nice. this in the yeah, I saw John Wick in the raid. I mean, this is. I, I think this is a much. It's hard to say. Much more artistically uh, executed uh, movie than John Wick. John Wick I is agree. just all well, ass kicking and and choreographed. And for me, the political stuff dancing. worked. I. I knew enough where it worked for me Mm. and it felt just righteous and empowering. And I wanted him to just beat the fuck out of these people. That's the problem. I never really got there. Like I hated these guys. It's like, Oh, look at these villains. They're like, we hate hate them. Yes. We hate them. Okay. But I like that. They didn't fully fill you in on why he's doing all this until later. You get sort of drips of this and flashbacks. Yeah. I like that. They weren't weren't leading the horse to water and you kind of were picking up on the reveals as they went. That was a fun puzzle to put together. The soundtrack was fucking great. We knew exactly where he was going to be like at this point in the movie. We know he's going to get there and then we know ultimately he's going to end up there and it's... I mean, the scene of the wallet getting stolen was phenomenal and the way that was cut to music. It seemed needlessly elaborate. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was just glorious filmmaking, especially for a first time director. I don't know. I, don't, I fucking love this I didn't. Movie. I didn't hate yeah. it. I was just I'm unmoved. Somewhere, I'm somewhere in between you two. I enjoyed it very much. I was just kind of unmoved and it's like, I've seen all this before. I'm glad to see Dev doing it. It's kind of cool seeing like, this unlikely guy doing it. I mean, I didn't love nobody either. It was kind of the same thing. Like, you, you but know. I think you just don't like these movies. I mean, then with the straight up vengeance movies, unless you like Promised Land, I fucking love. But but I mean the ones that involve this kind of this style of combat. I think it's just not for you. It's not for me. 
It's not. You know what? Also, elements. Because I think of, this uh, is really, really. I think this is at like the height of its job. You know, what I say I talk about gun porn in a lot of these movies, right? This one had a little bit of that, but it was more blood porn than anything yeah. else. I mean, it this was. Yeah, like, you like seeing yeah, blood one, seep out. Of, uh, we got. Oh yeah. We got everything gallons everything of that. It was brutal. Once. Everything everywhere all at once. A little bit. What are you talking about? In the frenetic energy, especially in the fight scenes, uh, it reminded me of that. That's very strange. Well, yeah, I mean, I could, I could see, especially like in the kitchen fight scene there yeah. towards the end. Like, yeah, it's. I like the ambiguity at the end of. I'm not entirely sure how to feel about how this movie ended, I about what he ends up doing. How did that? I can't remember. I'm just saying the the tone of it. Yeah. Or how they present the shot. I don't know. I don't even remember. I, I remember the the climax, but I can't remember. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying is is what he ultimately does and the the, the way he does it and how, how maybe brutal we talk, it ends we up do being. a spoiler on this. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we do. Why do you hate the spoilers so much, Brian? What's wrong with you? Because he wants to do it on air. We're, hey, we're going to be a true spoiler. Next week, we forgot to, because we're terrible at, at doing the show. You know, maybe in our, in our next 20 years, we'll get yeah. better. Uh, next That's when it usually kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> the third decade <laughs> of doing something. Next week, we are going to be doing, maybe it'll become a regular, like maybe monthly uh, segment on the here on, on this here program. We're going to be doing the uh, the parent guide. Oh, Yeah. Drake did a game. great job of posting uh, rounds of the Parent Guide game. The Goose and Michael, they, everyone, uh, the new team is is really filling in nicely uh, for the for the for the lost I got, Mitch. I got a couple of uh, messages being like, I don't know what is this. I don't know what the this Parent is. Guide game. Yeah, and I realized, oh, we haven't done that in quite some time. Let's uh, make it part of the show. Let's do a couple. Of and rounds. let's just do a quick refresher on what the Parent Guide game is. Uh, a, a number of years ago, I somehow stumbled yes. across something called the Parent Guide. So on upsetting. quiet, I'll, don't worry. On IMDb, and I had no idea that it existed. I think I might have even even been before Atticus, so I saw no point to it. Truth be told, I, I've used it a few times. Like, for my, can I show this to Atticus? Is it too severe? But there's a Parent Guide. I think it only shows up on the uh, app. It might not show up online. I don't know. Hmm. But there's a parent guide where any parent or anyone can actually go on there and like you know rate the movie as far as uh, gore, profanity, a bunch of different categories, sex, smoking, and then they actually go into sometimes detail. Like you can, as a user, you can go on there and explain what this egregious smoking scene is all about. I found it hilarious. I can't remember what movie I brought in, and then Brian immediately said, "Let's make it a competition," and he turned it into a somewhat of a game, and that's uh, the parent guide game. So yeah, so we'll play that. Uh, what what would happen was Logan oh, it's on the desktop back in the day back in the day maybe it's something's not on the desktop anyways back in the day Logan producer Logan before Avery would run the game and he reads a like line one of the warnings from the parent guide from a particular movie and the the, the name of the game is you got to guess what movie it is that's right yeah think of it progressively harder and you know that's some movies easy. don't have any and some movies have lots and. Uh, I sometimes I find myself watching a movie and something incredibly inappropriate and un, un, unsettling happens, and I think I can't wait to read the parent guide on this. <laughs> Here, Some of them are very comical. Let's do this right now. I'll read you a, a review or a guide from a recent movie mm. uh, under sex and nudity. There is a brief sight of a female breast and male buttock nudity. Bodies lie bleeding. No, uh, violence and gore. Uh. There's loud motors Scene, on that side. Scenes I feel like of, I'm in a scene from Akira. Scenes of animal slaughter and butchery result in a sight of blood spurts and bloody carcasses. What the hell is this? This is, is a this, uh, Promised Land. It is. Huh. You got in two guesses. Look at you. Not two, not two shabs. Well, you gave me the layup with like you saw this recently, and then I've only seen like you know thirty movies recently. So. <laughs> I've only seen thirty. Yeah. I mean, in the last you know, six months. Oh. Profanity. There is infrequent, very strong language, such as cunt and fuck. Oh, geez. As well Brian, as milder on. terms, Brian. which include bitch, cock, shit, oh, Brian, piss, come on, come on. asshole, All right, Brian, ass, there's bastard, no need for this. son of a bitch. I love that some, some prissy, crude person is writing this down. Like, I'm yeah. never clutching her pearls. As soon as they come out. Thank God Johnny didn't see this. Hopefully your Johnny doesn't see it either. She has oh. her phone out in the theater. <laughs> this, <laughs> kind this of right to sell. This one might give it away. Uh, a man who has been beaten and whipped off screen is thrown into a pit where boiling water is repeatedly poured over him. I feel like you could give me that one 10 years from now and I'll be like, promise, that's about past started right <laughs> that's past started. <laughs> Once again, for the beautiful ladies. We do not see the water <laughs> I see pauses him, for laughter. We hear his screams. <laughs> All right, Bradbury, what are you doing over there? Let's, uh, let's get to uh, a man monkey man. Drags monkey a man. woman across a room and throws them through a window. 
I, I wish I loved Monkey Man as much I as you do. Love, I think that I, I was just, kind of blown away by how much I loved Monkey Man. Is it is it just oh, this is gonna it's sound very wrong, fun. but it it wasn't really fun though because it was, was it was extremely he was fun. down and dour like he didn't really have any fun quippy lines or anything he wasn't the kind of guy that I want to hang out with he was a, a lone but the, but the, the combat around. was fun the combat but the combat was kind of you know there's there's long stretches where there's no combat. And I was in for those scenes. I think it earned it. And we're just kind of like in these dark alleys and dark rooms. And, you know, we have him biting his time. And it's like, I don't know. It, I think you're just. Neither here nor there. It was like a three-star movie for me. I, I and four stars like for me. I, I think I that they set out and made the movie they, they look to make. It's just a movie that I've. I think it's just a genre that's just not for you. Now, the monkey stuff. It was pretty tight. <laughs> I, I disagree. That was the weakest part. No, yeah, not for me. Charlton Copley was having a good time. Charlton was. I, I, I enjoyed time. him. He was having a very fun time. Charlton showed up in the uh, season finale, series finale of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I would never have guessed. I know. You could have given me a hundred actors to guess. <laughs> Cameo at, in the, the last episode. Of Bizarre. No, he was playing a uh, South African fellow, but uh, there was really, was there any point to his scene even? I don't know. Bizarre. You know who else was in the last two episodes? The boss. The boss is in the last two episodes. Corolla? Mr. Bruce Springsteen. Oh. Not your old boss, you suckle. The boss. I know. Imagine me not having an opportunity to suckle. For, uh, for I know, you're suckleless. I see you just wandering around I your just, house. Just, just, uh, yeah, just with lips pursed. It's very sad. It's like the runt in the litter, just like not without a nipple, just kind of squirming. Please, I need some milk. Hey, should we take a quick break before we get to uh, uh, I don't know why to two homework movies that are worthy of talking about? At least says I. See Monkey Man. I was glad it was oh, really Monkey briefly. That's a movie I would watch. Jordan Peele saved this, saved Man. this from Netflix. It was supposed to go directly to Netflix, only be streamed there, and he got it into theaters. Okay, good. I mean, it's Through a way theater around. movie. Also, way better know, than seeing this on a laptop. They'd be I agree. fucking criminal. There were some people in my theater that I had to talk to, and I don't like that. Dude. That, that usually... Uh, That's not good. Why did you have to talk to them? Because I could hear them clearly, and I had to let them know that we could all hear them. Uh, hey, just to let you know, we can all hear everything you're doing. The theater One guy was very upset, and he was very sad. He said, I'm sorry, man. His friend doubled down, got louder. They, the, the... Trying to think of a nice... The woman... You should have monkey man him. Who was with them. She continued her cackle. And then I looked down, I don't know, halfway through the movie. They were just gone. They just fucking split. Wow. Movie was too heady for him, I guess. Just so, yeah, too much Over heads. A lot of talking in my theater. I saw talking. 10 a.m. on a Saturday, packed. Huh. People like the monkey man. People like monkey People man. People are liking it. I feel like if you if you like John Wick and Nobody, you absolutely have to run out and see this movie. I think I think I've just seen too many movies that are like this, uh, Avery, and maybe you know. But I think you maybe don't. when you get a little older and you've seen as much as much as I've seen. You but I, I also just think fundamentally you don't like these movies. <laughs> but you know what? This this was I was it was I was afraid of that. I was afraid it was just going to be nonstop ass kicking, which I see as male dancing, which is just choreographed fight scenes, which bore the fuck out of me. And it's not. It that. wasn't that. No, no. They had a couple scenes that had that. For the most part, it wasn't that. It was just a lot of biting your time slowly and then bloodbath and then more biting. I like the, the slow burn. I did, I did too. I don't know. I think all the dark red lights just kind of like put me, put me to time. Maybe tired. I think fundamentally you just did so not much, like this. So this much is just dark not for red you. bar. Scenes. How much did you want to be in that club though? I could light up a smoke in there yeah. and have, have a cocktail. <laughs> Give me something that's not bleached that's right. to put up my nose. This is like a religious man t- talking about like why he doesn't like porn. And can't imagine why other people would enjoy porn. No, I'm not like, saying I don't imagine there's a, there's it. There's a lot to like I'm there. Not, I can imagine you're why other rude. people would like. Well, actually, that's not true. I, 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 I wonder why people like John Wick as that's much. That's what I'm saying. I think you're, 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 not, you're not a fan of it. Okay, let's take a fucking break. Let's talk about something I am a fan of. Come on next. Is story arcs and call characters. Call the scheming, scheming, scheming. French. So much scheming in this town. That's right. A lot of scheming. You could argue it's needlessly elaborate. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't think so. Next. Plotting. And it's the if you tell me, I believe Last Airbender is streaming on Paramount Plus. Uh, I don't know. It's commercial. Actually, you know right? what? The audience has no idea we're talking about. Yeah, because we just did it off air. We did. Uh, a, we just did a spoiler of uh, Monk Man, which I, you know, I, it's fine. It's, it's, I don't. I don't dislike it. I feel like I'm getting a bum rap over here. I just didn't like. I don't want to take it to the ball. It's the greatest film I've ever made. I would disagree. I, I feel like it's going to be on Avery's like uh, Vaulties next You're year. You're not wrong. <laughs> settle down. Everyone just settle the fuck down. How about that? Would have made the Maltese last year. The Maltese? The Maltese, Maltese and the Maldives? Maltese. Would have been the Maldives last year. You like it so much you could find yourself in the Maldives and you could like just stay inside the hotel watching this movie, which is absurd. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's a good that's a good test. Like how much you like this yeah. movie? Would is you... it Maldives good? <laughs> is it overwater bungalow good? <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get to Stephen Morris's picks. Jean de Florette. Jean de Florette was a French film. It is a French film from 1986, directed by Claude Berry. Claude Berry, I'm just gonna say. Star of fuck these names. Starring <laughs> Yves <laughs> Montan. You don't have uh, Daniel Atul, Gerard Depardieu, Gerard Depardieu, Elizabeth Depardieu, and Ernestine Ma- Ernestine Mazu Mazurana. Mm-hmm. Mazurana. Thanks, Brian, for doing that. Honestly, thank you for always doing that. I'm bad at reading uh, names that are familiar. Reading American with. names. I, I read Mike Mike A because I'm terrible. Well, this would be a real problem for you. 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Who doesn't like this? This is on the Criterion Channel. Mm. And the Criterion Channel alone, you cannot rent this anywhere else. <clears throat> Sit out. You line these movies up. Just the names alone, the posters. <clears throat> well, are we doing both at once or are we doing one and the other? We're doing one and the other. But you, you take all three of these movies and you show me all three posters a hundred, a thousand times out of a thousand times. With Monkey Man is one of the movies. I, I'm watching Monkey Man first. Like, there's no way. These movies look brutal. It feels dull. Feels dull. When I say feel, I mean like the feeling it going the into The idea, it. the homework idea. We've talked about homework and movies feeling like homework in the past. All that said and done, I have more fond feelings on these movies by far and away than I do from Monkey really? Man. But there ain't apples, apples and oranges. They're the apples and kumquats. But as far as my engagement and uh, interest and storylines and arcs and characters, this these two movies... Crushed the old monkey man. Yeah, well, they crossed my expectations. I will say that. Like that, I ended up liking Jean de Florette, for example. I'll take that one first. Much better. So, not much, much more than Jean I of the Flower. Much more than I would. No. Why not? Florette's name of a person. Florette? Yeah. Florette's the woman that died, the, the man of the uh, Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah. And he is, the, so the, he is the, the son of The Florette. titular character, as Brian likes to say, is Jared Dapadou. Gerard Dapadou. He is the titular Jean. Jean, yes. Uh, de Jean de Florent. And uh, he takes a while to come on the scene. So why don't you, you take it away, set it up, and let's talk about why this movie's worth, these two movies are worth watching. So this, uh, I should have done the research. It's based on a novel. Uh, the Both films were made at the same time, came out of the same year. Uh, they are two parts. Reminded me of a way of Gone with the Wind, just in the sense that these are two... It isn't two, but it's, you know, you used to get the two, like, you know, two cassettes. This is two stories that are very much the same story, right? So you have Jean it's continuation. Diffler. It's like it's it's what sequels should be more often than they are not. We yeah. usually sequels are like, people really seem to like that. It was kind of a surprise hit. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? This is 10, this, the sequel, the second movie is 10 years in the future and it concludes our story. You know what I mean? Like we actually get uh, uh, a natural arc of where this all goes. And that said, one movie, the first one could have worked on its own. Like it did, if, if there was sure. not a, a sequel, the sequel just added to yeah, the goodness because the story continued. Uh, but it could have it could have ended that way. I mean, we sure. see, you know, I was talking with Carano just today. We we had a long drive out to Pomona and back, and we were talking for whatever reason we were talking a lot about Chinatown and just what a fucking bummer that end is. <laughs> Ultimate bummer ending. Anyways, yeah, the movies end. Okay, uh, so the movie opens up in uh, pr- provincial pr- province, France, and it's the French countryside. And it's, it's like um, the late forties, early fifties, probably. I guess that's a great question. I did. I, we I, see some cars it has in the very to be beginning. Post war. Yeah, I think yeah. it's 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 right. You know, during that post industrial uh, era where you know there is modernism coming in, and, and the uh, main character at that point, the first character we see, he's just home from war. So yeah. you're doing the math. Yes. So and he gets dropped off by a car, but then we don't see cars, and he's in this tiny little sleepy farm town where it, it's kind of frozen in time. It could be like the 1600s. Yes, it's in, in the time. countryside. They are fairly remote. Um, the technology is uh, is uh, not there, and they are all farmers to some degree. There's one plot of land followed by the other, followed by the other, and they all do different things. And we, our, our character, who we introduce to. Uh, he's a youngish man, at twenty early twenties. Somewhat of a, a dimwit. He's a, he's a simple fellow. Simple man. Simple fellow. He uh, gets out of the car and traipses up to the uh, property they dropped him off at, and he's like, "Hey, Grandpa! Hey, Papet. Uncle! What, Papet, Papet!" Yeah. And uh, the guy looks out his window. He's like, "What are you doing here?" He's like, "I just got back from the war and ready to work." He's like, "Oh, great! Come on up!" And they have a 
lovely reunion, and the, the young man exclaims, I want to grow carnations. Well, he doesn't tell him, I mean, but it leads to that. Does it? No, it's a secret, and uh, he has a secret. He doesn't want to tell the old man. And oh. He brought these back from the war. Long story short, he has an idea to turn their land into uh, a money uh, adventure by growing carnations. And he's yes. got a whole system, and he's working it out. And the old man is, we come to find, a patriarch of the town in that he is probably the most successful, wealthy person in the town. Yeah, not well, much. he comes from a family that used to run the town. Yes, and the lineage. lineage. The lineage is starting to fade. He is, it's him and this dimwit. His his nephew are the last two with these names. Uh, there's not much hope of continuing the lineage. All these uh, story uh, story elements go into the driving force of moving the story forward. I should also tell you that Stephen Morris. I'm like, how do you even find what? What would make you watch these movies? You didn't go to film school. This these aren't even film school type movies. Uh, they are cinephile, like highbrow. Yeah, uh, I'm better than you at watching movies than you are type type movies. Have you seen Jean de Flore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't let that scare you because this is worth watching. I'm a, b- a bit of a simple to myself. Love this movie. Love both of them. Uh, he was was year a few years ago. Uh, it was uh, recommended to Stephen Morris uh, after uh, watching and loving Minari. And there's some similarities there with Minari, sure. which was a big hit a few years ago. This movie kind of lines up. You know what this is movies. a better version of? Hmm. Did it occur to you as very similar to Killers of the Flower Moon? To an extent, yeah. I think I did. I was the thinking about Rubes. young man just and, back from war. Yeah. Was that taken under the wing by his rich and possibly shady uncle? So there's to a, screw the locals out of their land? So... I don't know how we talk about the one without the other without giving everything away. That's going to be a real challenge. I don't know if we yeah, can. There are I don't know movies. if we can. I think we just kind of talk about them collectively and how they're both worth watching. So well, let's talk about what happens then. Uh, the, the inciting incident. Yeah, and, and let's just say we have not talked about the humor in this movie, but there's a lot of subtle, fun humor that keeps this movie skipping along and like not like slap your knee, laugh out loud, funny. But these two sure, characters, right, it's kind of a two-hander. Most of this movie is kind of like a two-hander with the young simpleton and his I guess so, yeah. older uh, uncle. They rarely interact. And they have this plot of land, but they have ideas. And then, and the uncle sees the uh, how, how much the carnations can bring to the family name and the plot. But here's the problem. They don't have the right soil for it. But the neighboring land, the neighboring their neighbor has land that has good soil that they can mm-hmm. do it. Water is an issue, but they know of a secret spring they on know that spring land. Comes. And good news, the lady who lived there just died. Mm-hmm. So here's where the scheming begins. And they go over and they try and you know offer money, and one thing leads to another, and the, the, the neighbor doesn't care for them much at all. And there there may or may not have been an accident that happened to Did they offer us. money for all, I guess, yeah. when the guy was struggling, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So the the rest well, we of— can say, We can say uh, what they do to screw them over, right? Because that's early in the movie, and that kicks off the plot. Like the, the the land changes hands, and they think they're going to get the land, and they it's not as easy as they think. So it's like one of those things where it keeps they ratchet it up and ratchet it up and try to continue to set it up so that they can come into ownership of this land. And there's, involves- a, there's a very brazen move made early on where they are effectively choking out this guy uh, in terms of what he needs to survive. Are you talking about the spring? They plug up the spring. Yeah. But there's it's funny great. little moments. Like there's a, there's a funeral and the guy's dead and they put a shotgun in his in his casket because they said that he loved the, the shotgun. He wanted to be buried with it. And now the whole procession is walking behind this this carriage that's holding the coffin that has the shotgun in it. And then one of like the people, there's like, I don't know, 10 guys walking directly behind the carriage as it goes bumbling up this uh, dirt road. And somebody says, was that gun loaded? And I'm like, knowing him, it probably was loaded. And it's got a hair trigger, and then and then they all kind of part to make room because you don't know if the gun's going to go off at any second out of the casket that's in the little little moments like that, little funny fun moments like yeah. that. Ultimately, you. what happens over the next four hours, and we'll get back to this a little bit, is lots and lots of scheming, 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 trying yeah, to make it work. Talk about the second movie. That's what I'm saying. So, so we can't, of we the spring. Continue. We is, can't. We, but we haven't even got to Gerard Dapadu uh, from Green Card Gerard, fame. Jerry Dapadu shows yes. up. So he shows up, and he is the rightful owner of this land that they saw uh, that the uncle and the she nephew heard. so right uh, so so yearn for. They desperately want this land to make their carnation business. It's this simple, guys. It's simple, small stakes that you get 
invested in. And they want this land so badly. And then this city fella comes um, up with his family and it's like the worst possible scenario. This guy, they're hoping that he's coming up just to see the land so that he can sell it to the first person who wants yeah. it. They've already marred the, he's the spring. The big city. They've already hidden the spring and plugged up the spring that's on the land that makes the land valuable. So they're like, this guy's not going to know. On top of all that, Gerard Dapperdu, who's a city guy, he's a tax collector, turned would-be farmer, is a hunchback as well, which is just a fun yes. little wrinkle in the story, right? Which all adds comes, up to something. Comes, uh, everything in this movie, everything in this story is told to drive the story forward and gets wrapped up in a satisfying way. And when it's very, very adeptly written and True. executed. Uh, the rest of the movie is pretty much them scheming against poor hunchback Gerard Depardieu in his best efforts yes. to bring progress he's to the land. So and he's one of those uh, learned fellas who they don't take kindly to uh, because he's trying to bring progress to their small little town. They don't like progress. We don't want any progress yeah. here. We do things the way we've always done. Such as an example is uh, the hunchback Gerard Depardieu. He's read books, many, many manuals and books, and he's done a lot of prepping, ready, getting ready to be a farmer, a successful farmer now with his, this new plot of land that he uh, inherited. And it's like one of them is like you get two good rabbits. Those rabbits, they like to bang, right? You get two good ones, you put them in a cage. He did the math, and it's like after a, just a month's time, you have some ungodly yeah. amount of rabbits. After a month, you have 1,800 rabbits. Yeah, and then, we're, I don't know if we're doing this justice, but the, the simpleton. How do you do this justice? The young guy, the simpleton, who's been deployed by his scheming smart uncle to befriend the hunchback, is coming back with all the intel, and he's uh, um, sabotaging him along the way. And that that is... It's almost sitcom-y at times, but done with a very rich French background. This movie, both of them, is they're very rich. The backdrop is rich. The and story is rich. And you wouldn't think it would work, too. Like, it feels very, it was too simple, too A to B. But, it, yeah, it with the story, as far as how, how small the stakes are. But that said, once everything's wrapped up and the entire uh, two parts conclude, it's poetic. We haven't even mentioned the title of the second one. Um, yeah, I did. So uh, since then, the hunchback has a wife and a little daughter who's probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years old. Sure. And uh, we'll just leave it. uh, The first one ends there. The second one picks up with that daughter who is still in the town. She's 10 years old. She lives in the outskirts. And I did not like her as a little girl. She annoyed me. Uh, She reminded me of my my friend's kid who I don't like. Not not Tessa before you. But she reminded me of a a friend who has a, uh, it's actually a, a son. But anyways, I didn't like her as a little girl. She is, a, what, she, she, when she's like, she plays like a 19 or 20 year old in the second one. She's sure. all growing up now. It's obviously a different actress. It's my, Emmanuel Burt. My God, is she just a, a, a picture of, of, of perfection. She, oh, she's, uh, if you, would, you would recognize her if you remember, she was the- One of the Bond girls. Female, know, right? No, Mission Impossible. In the Tom Cruise first Mission Impossible, she was- the uh, female lead. She was so goddamn She's beautiful and, and perfect and just believable and good actor and everything. I, so she is the lead and the, the namesake of the second movie. And it's her story. Yes. And her plight. And uh, as a her, result her of these cause, two guys her mission, and her, and her cause. Aid. And I mean, what else? What else? We can't really say anything more. Well, I was say Man and of the Spring movie. is movie number two. Also, of course, directed by Claude Berry, starring Yves Montand, uh, Daniel Allu, and Emmanuel Albert. Yes, 79%. Shocking. 79%. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I really am. Uh, streaming on Criterion. It's no monkey, man. Streaming on Criterion Channel. The, the premise is a bit far-fetched, but okay. I'm, I'm on board. So I'm in for number two. Stephen Morris, who uh, assigned us oh, this, he has a him? yeah. I talked to him today. He has a uh, from the set. I was on the set of Loaded for Barrow, and I, I took a breather and talked to Stephen for a bit. He has a uh, an idea that they came up with a they, they wrote the the second part first, and then went back and wrote the first part, and then decided to write novels. Like that's his idea. Okay. I don't know how much uh, of that lines up, but that's kind of how he interprets it. As far as how poetic the end is, I think maybe there's he might be onto something because to get to that ending, I think you kind of have to come up with it first and then you write it. reverse engineer it. Yeah. Uh, that that said, I mean, what else can we can we say about? Not this? much. Although I will say that what, what you mentioned the subtle humor. One thing that actually wasn't very subtle, it was actually kind of slapsticky, and this that I still laughed at. In the second one was. <laughs> 
Hey, Anderson is not joking. Uh, young Emmanuel Burt as the uh, t- titular Manon of the spring. Gorgeous. A picture yeah. of perfection. Yeah, there, there, there is no beautiful, more beautiful creature on God's earth other than my wife and child. Right. Uh, that said, the carnation mad grower, who is now 10 years older, guess one look at her? It's been, yeah. He's head over heels. Head over heels. Yeah. And he pr- proceeds to attempt to court her yes. over the next half an hour um, poorly. Uncomfortable. Sad, uncomfortable, very fun, and cringy at times. And yep. he loves her so much that I've never seen this done before. He finds a ribbon of hers and he stitches it into his chest. And there's blood, and it's it's visceral. Yes, he uh, <laughs> takes a needle and thread along with this, you know, this five inch ribbon that he's discovered of hers and uh, stitches it to his skin. And it does go uh, a little slapsticky and uh, silly at times, but it's still, you know, you buyable. You, it's not like they're, they're stepping outside of the of No, it wasn't tone. too much. But it also gets to places where it's really like heartfelt and uh, sad almost for characters that are very complex and that you should not like nor dislike because they're all flawed, uh, with the exception of maybe her. Uh, even the, the hunchback, like you're not rooting for him 100 percent of the time. He comes off as a bit smug, and you know they they could have made it very black and white. They did not. I liked him. Uh, I like this 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 all of the characters. Rich, the arcs are great. I love. I really really enjoyed these two movies. Watch them back to back. Now, well, what about top five courtships? Quick caveat here, and you know I I I sometimes I can access movies like this, and I did. I didn't tell you. Like, I, this is the first time we've been in person in like a month, probably. Sure. So I was in Japan, and then uh, I came back. Spring I was very, very me, sick. Yeah. Uh, I got diagnosed with acute uh, tonsillitis. Ooh. I was really, really Ugh. sick. And uh, the, the doctors, I went to the doctor. That's how sick I was. I don't, I don't go there unless you know I'm sick. I'm getting worse. Sixteen days in, I was getting worse. So I'm like, I better go see somebody. Uh, he said I was a couple days away from having to actually get them removed if oh, I wow. waited longer. And he said I had like tonsillitis on top of a couple other Did viruses. Did he uh, tonsil balls? No, but he gave me like heavy duty. I'm on heavy duty, like the antibiotics and whatnot. That's I watched this. I watched this while very, very sick, laying in bed uh, for you know five straight hours. Oh, comfort food. And you know, I went down really smooth. I like to think the caffeinated normal Andy would have liked this movie, these two movies too. But I was in the perfect state of mind where I was just sedated listless and sedated. I wasn't on drugs or anything. I was still sick. and My heart I, I was, was just a little lower. But my heart beat, beat was lower, and I knew that I wasn't supposed to be out of bed. So I'm like, I'm just going to like, and I was dreading these movies, dreading them. I'm like, this fucking French. They were just the Christ, titles. Christ you want to sleep. I know, I know. Avery, we sold this to you? He what? wasn't listening. He was reading about the Dodgers. I and mean, you pulled me back in with the, with the, with the babe. My with God. the picture of perfection. You know Emmanuel Bird, right? I mean, I just, I just Googled yeah. her. She's you brought very, me back. Very, very pretty. In this movie, there's a scene where she's dancing naked. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Find out how old she is because I'm going to be upset if she's under 18. Now, did your mom enjoy this? Because I know my mom would have loved hating the uh, the young simpleton. She would have hated him so much. I think she liked it. I don't think she liked it as much as me, but. Or my uh, mom would have. Yeah. Sorry. I wonder if you like Taste of Things then. I can't wait to watch your little French. Uh, I'm looking, French I'm looking films. forward to it. Hey, if it's a rich, there, there's these certain movies where they're just. Oh, it's rich. Yeah. What was the one? It was actually a reboot. Oh, I should look that up in the break. Oh, what was that? I think Kerry was it Kerry Mulligan. Okay, oh, taste of things now available to rent. Tight. Tell me when I can stream it. Two hours and fifteen minutes. I'm out. A lot of tastes. All right, that's it. Thank you, Stephen Morris. That was uh, uh, I exceeded my expectations. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Stephen Morris. And I love uh, bringing movies like that to the program. There's a place for them, for sure. I mean, this might find its way to best uh, old new movies. It's, yeah, and it's kind of kind of one movie, right? It's kind of like the Kill Bill thing going on over there. We got mm-hmm. the Kill Bill for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. This is effectively one four-hour story. Yeah. Uh, are you guys? Oh, Far From the Matting Crowd, which is kind of like, I guess, could be considered a reboot from 2015. Like, that's a movie I should not have enjoyed, but I just settled in and it washed over me, and I really like that Drama, romance, period piece, far from their matting crowd. It worked for me. All right, top five unnecessary reboots after this. We're back. Time to talk about five top five. Top, top, flop, <laughs> top, dive. flop, dive, flop, dive, time, bottom five, top five unnecessary reboots. 
I'll be a stickler, but... Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about uh, that element. Sorry about Didn't Shorty stickle at the beginning? He's a stick. An hour ago? As the list Weren't goes you stickling? On. As the list goes on. That was Actually. Pre- Avery, that was pretty stickling. And how many people hated you in class? I'm not, I'm not making jokes. I'm <laughs> oh, just going to say hate in, you. In school, like a lot probably of people most, probably hated you, right? Probably most. <laughs> most. Yeah. You know, that's when I hit my grand slam. No one came out to high five me. I remember when you were... You did something with Bill Burr on stage in front of an audience years ago. Remember that? There was some yes. kind of thing. That, that was Doug Loves Movies. Doug Loves Movies, yeah. And you went on and you did some kind of like a movie uh, trivia competition yes. against Bill. Yes, right? Paul Aaron game. And I remember uh, Bill and, called you on exactly what you are, which is like, uh, he's like, you were probably the kid who was like, hey, you didn't assign us the homework. Some you know what? Lines. Bill's not always right. Bill was 100% right. What he recognized and said. That, in that case, he was, that motherfucker stole my answer from me and got it wrong and ruined the game. Just, uh, just still Doug, still, Doug still got the show. I believe he does. In fact, uh, this is going to hurt you so bad. Bill like offered to be on the film vault. Yeah, he was supposed to be on the film vault. Like, I emailed him and never, never. Well, no, we contacted. talked about it in person a couple. We're going way back now, but we talk, He didn't like the uh, topic that we were doing. He wanted to do something more <laughs> against the grain. I think like really? top five chick flicks or something. And we had something more. I don't remember. But then we just lost. We just lost touch. And then Bill kind of exploded and became very big. But I was booking him on Loveline all the time. Sure. He also had a falling out with the guy that owned the show, which he might associate. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Not this show, though. You know what? Last email I got from him was in 2011. It says, definitely. Sounds good. Exclamation point. It's a long time ago. A long, long time ago. You know who didn't reply me? I might run into him again <laughs> at, a, uh, at a club, and uh, I'll... I'll we, but I'm not gonna. We're not gonna Re- have him on right now. Before we have other people on. We should just start having people on for segments now that we... Uh, you know, this thing called Zoom exists. You yeah. know? I feel bad. Why don't we, uh, why don't we do that? Why don't we, we do could? that? We should do that. Oh, I did, I did go back to him. Oh, would you that stop it? Motherfucker. You sent him the video, the Grand Slam. He had no reply. <laughs> Weirdest thing. Uh, Grand Slam, man. If the base is loaded. I understand that, Brian. I understand that. Four runs. Yeah, I get what. <laughs> Four revise right there. You know. All right. I hate it when people call runs points, and I hate it when people call goals points, and I see it in movies all the time, and it really, really upsets me. But uh, uh, Bombay, Gordon Bombay, there are points, in one though. of the in one of the uh, uh, Mighty Ducks says we're only losing by two points, and I'm like, what the who the fuck? How do you? <laughs> there are points on hockey. There right? are points with like, scoring points for individual players. You can get like you know, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, you get an apple, and you get standings? a. Yeah, there's points in the standings as well, but goals are goals. They're, not, they're never points. Gordon Bombay. You know how terrible the only that flaw. is? It's pretty bad. It might be the only problem with that entire franchise. That said, don't like it. Don't like Is that streaming? Is that your first pick? Is that your number five it's reboot? It's not a reboot. I do miss that. I watched all of the uh, the TV show that was uh, from a couple years ago, the, uh, the Mighty Ducks TV show. It was that new uh, original series for Disney. They just pulled it. I just yanked it. You can't even see it anywhere. It doesn't stream anywhere. Like pulling the Goldie. It's not like that. Was, was it like animated? A, no, no, no. It, Gordon Bombay even came back. They had the Don't Bother. So the, the girl from uh, the Abbots or whatever it was called. Not the Abbots. What was, what was that? Girl? The Costellos. What was that show that the the, the, the girls said? Uh, the Abbots. No, not the Abbots. What was it called? Not had the, the really Abbots. fast writing, uh, cult oh, following. Oh, Modern Family? No, no, no. Oh, what was that called? Abbott oh. Elementary? Oh, yeah, shit. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Freezing Geeks? No. Let's, let's, let's get to our top five. No, Jesus Christ. No. Pen 15? <laughs> no, it's like there's mother and daughter, single mom and daughter, and they live in a town, mother? and there's all sorts of things. It's Gilmore always something. Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. Yeah. <laughs> Gilmore Girls. The mom from Gilmore Girls is in the, uh, uh. the Mighty Ducks TV. What are we doing? Let's talk <laughs> bottom five reboots. Unnecessary. There was, there was a mom on that show? There's a mom on that show. I never saw the show. Gilmore Girls. I'm familiar with very Allison. good writing. Allison Bedell. Was it? Yeah. Every time I, I was in a room when it was on because I was dating a girl who loved it, I'd be like, the delivery is off kilter and unnatural, and the show is not for me. But the writing is very good. My, the only time I would see that on, it felt like it was just those two women sitting on a couch, kind of crying. 
And talking. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine what the, how you make an entire series. Lauren Graham, though, plays one of the hockey moms. She's the lead hockey mom. And uh, get this, she has a relationship with Gordon Bombay. Who wants out of hockey, Bright? He doesn't want to be a part of it anymore, even though he owns a rink. Is she wearing jeans and tearing up? <laughs> she does tear up. I have really good news. What? All seven seasons streaming on Netflix. Seven seasons? Seven? Oh, Gilmore Girls. Oh, Gilmore Girls. Uh, we're, we're talking, uh, we've, moved on, we've moved back to the Mighty Not Ducks. Me. Game Changers. I'm in. Can't watch it anywhere, though. Gone. I pulled it. Okay, let's go. Really? What are we doing? <laughs> that's I, good, let's, that's let's a go. great question. Come on. We're looking up Gilmore Girls. This is, a, streaming. What this is a weird episode. Let's go. Game right. changers. Not streaming. No, it's nowhere. They just <laughs> it, it, they produced it. They put the money up for it. They, they spent millions of dollars on it. And they got a couple good seasons out of it. And they don't even put it on their goddamn channel anymore. Surprising. And it's good. Hey, it's Gordon Bombay. Hey, Brian, let's go. Brian, is it streaming anywhere? Yeah. Nowhere. This, this just in. No. It's it's like hanging out with Batgirl in hell. Limbo. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. All right, number five, unnecessary reboot. And again, please don't think we're just hating. I, I point out there are many good reboots out there. However, in fact, with number five, I don't even think it's that bad of a movie. Just really encapsulates this list as unnecessary. Are you ready for this? Oh, Jesus, Brian. <laughs> I'm waiting for an answer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm ready. 2012's The Amazing Spider Man. Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider Man. Nah, it doesn't count. Not a reboot. Of course it is. It's it is old- not. We've already covered this, Brian. He shows up in like the most recent one, Far From Heaven That's Home, not his or whatever. Movie. He's in no, it though, I'm playing about his the... version of Spider-Man. And so it's all part of the same universe. No, 2012 is the amazing, which is Spider-Man, the multiverse, is a reboot by any definition. It's all the exact same origin story again, <clears throat> same characters. Yeah, because it's a different, different part of the different multiverse in the same universe oh, that no, is I, Spider-Man. I, I, they didn't plan that at the time. You they can, did, but no, you here we are, it. and it is, it is that. No. No, I, I, dis- I, I take issue with that because you could Gio make, let, let Brian know. You could make that same argument about any reboot. Oh, Nolan's Batman is just another universe. Hey, did oh wait, wait, they did though, didn't they? With the uh, the old uh, leagues of just Justice League or whatever. No, it was uh, the Flash oh, the with Flash. the uh, the other. Right. Uh, 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 yeah, Keaton shows up and whatnot. Oh yeah, and so does uh, Clooney. So there you go. It's not a reboot anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I don't, th- I don't think that's the victory you think it is. Uh, it's All right, great, Garfield. No good, unnecessary. You didn't. It actually, wasn't is it that the bad. same villain? Yes. No, this one has. Oh well, then it's pretty underwhelming. But there's always new villains. Yeah, with new movies and with sequels. Yes, if you're remaking no. a movie, if you're rebooting a movie, you're going to have the no, same. No, because that's a remake. Two. You're gonna have the same. That is true. That is a remake. That'd be a remake. That'd be like uh, if you're rebooting a movie, you're going to have the same good guy and the same bad guy, no, right? Not necessarily. No, not at all. Scarecrow was the bad guy in Batman Begins. I never saw him before in the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you number can f- always learn it. Number, f- <laughs> number five for me. <laughs> never too old to learn. And then Brian's always happy to teach. He always is. Brian, why didn't you become a teacher? What do you, what do you think of You me? are such a, a, a smug uh, uh, college professor. How much would you have hated having him as a professor? I think a little less than having him as a, a classmate. Yeah? Less? Yeah. Really? Because... <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, because I I don't like it when when my own like you know peers are fucking me. I, I get authority is going to fuck me. You I get think that. You're my peer. <laughs> <laughs> Number five for me is quite simple. You guys are gonna give me shit because I guess it's more of a re. Uh, uh, I'll judge. <laughs> a remake of the, uh, because they never did anything with uh, with either one of these movies, the original nor the uh, the remake or reboot. And that's when a stranger calls. When a stranger calls, the call is coming from inside the house. Come that came out in 2006, and it was just a cheap. Hopeful cash grab. I don't even know if it made any money. Uh, and it's just that, that same story. It's tired. It's boring. It's dull. Yeah. And it's, I guess it's more of a remake. We, could we do top five worst remakes? Always a fun time to talk about new movies. So When a Stranger Calls is a movie. And I'm not going into details in these movies because I'm not trying to highlight movies that I, I find to be um, not worth our time. I'm going to go into detail number four. The original's horrible. 
After the first 20 minutes, the original is it's, It doesn't. It's more horrible. of a TV movie than anything it's, else, but at least it, it... That's the perfect kind of movie you remake, though. It's like a movie yeah. that had something there. The first it, 20 minutes is some of the greatest cinema ever made. It's great. And then it becomes almost unwatchable. And, and all the years later, take that premise and then do it right, but they still did it wrong again. Yeah. I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new one. Say... Count as a reboot. Number four for me. This is really disappointing. And I realized, oh, I always thought it was a remake. But no, the original had a sequel. I'm talking about 2014's RoboCop. RoboCop from 2014, directed by Jose... What the fuck? <laughs> Padilla? This is not but a good, uh, good name day for Brian. And you know what? I, 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 I was looking back at my notes from 2014. I was very harsh on the star... Uh, Joel Kinman, mm-hmm. who we've seen as uh, he's flag in the uh, Su- uh, Suicide Squad movies. He's very good. I was a little hard on him thinking like, oh, this guy's terrible as a Robocop. This is a poorly written, poorly directed movie. You know, there's almost, there's one and a half good, two, two good scenes and the rest are very bad. Poor Gary Oldman gets wrapped up in this, but uh, it's uh, kind of completely necessary. We didn't need this in my life. Uh, didn't need this uh, in uh, in our film, Ken, but here we are. See, and I should I should also say that like a lot of these movies that are maybe on Brian's list or the listeners' list are also reds that I have not seen, so they cannot be on my list. But they're, I'm sure they're quite worthy. Are movies that I purposely, cool. like, fearfully sidestepped because I love some of these movies, such as RoboCop, so much that I'm oh, afraid yeah. of it sullying the original. It doesn't. But it's very uh, a waste of time. Don't sully my ridge. All right, number uh, number four for me. Is the Robocop? Uh, oh, string on Max. It's not worth it. Might be a good rewatch or a good watch along. Uh, number four for me is a you don't fuck with the classic. And you've seen the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. Oh, yeah. every, one of the greatest scores you will ever imagine. Really? The remake, remake, reboot, whatever you want to say. Remake. Uh, remake. All right. Hey, was there a sequel called Taking the Pelham? It's a fine movie. Five, six? It's a fine movie if you watch it in, you know, in a vacuum and the, the original doesn't exist. But when you when you know that perfection comes before it, sure. why? Why? Why do it? Just re-release. You know? I, I, I like to think that we as a society, are, uh, especially a movie-loving society, we're, we're smart enough to like say, oh, this movie's worthy of re-releasing in theaters for a few weeks and we should all go see it because we were too young when it came out or maybe not born. Let's all go celebrate Walter Matthau and Robert Shaw. Let's go watch it. Take it well. Pal, one, two, three. The original. And enjoy. My okay. family's sleeping. I understand that. But I get passionate. Uh, the fact that you're like, no, let's just pump, pump millions and millions of dollars into a, a sad kind of... It was Travolta, Tep- right? Travolta, yeah. It's just... It's just... Or tap it a remake. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. And if you're going to remake something, it takes something that almost hit the mark, but they didn't have the budget or they misstepped here or there. Maybe there's some, you know, some creative differences. And you, you, there's, But don't take a, take a fucking class. Well, like what they did with the, the thing, where there was the black and white one, and then they remade exactly. it. Exactly. The Fly. John Carpenter, yeah. The Fly is a great example. Both remakes. Actually, you consider The Fly a re- No. The, the new one had a sequel. What are you talking about? Oh, the, yeah, the original, the, the Stephen Price. Help me, help me. Okay. One, I don't think they ever got to a second one. Did. No. Uh, yeah, the, you're a great example of the thing. The first one uh, can't be, you know, mm-hmm. not a, uh, but then Car- Carpenter. Carpenter. Carpenter sees God those damn. Right. Speaking of which, we will be watching Prince of the Darkness. Damn. Next week, we'll be watching Prince of Darkness. Thank you very much. To one Anthony Moffat. Prince, Prince of, Darkness, of Darkness, assigned by Anthony Moffat. Could we do those a watch long? No. No two words in one sentence? Anthony Moffat. Do I need to see They Live? Uh, oh, yes. It was fun. It is good? Yes. Yeah. I had to waited way too long to watch that. It's got a very rough around the edges quality that is very endure- like endearing. You know what I mean? It's not polished at all. But it's fun. It's fun. Because I was afraid to be more campy schlock than fun. This just in. Uh, sorry. A sorry, Anthony. A little Anthony. bit of campiness to it. 
Anthony Morphy. Yeah, enough that you would like it. He came to chew uh, gum and kick, uh, bubble gum and kick ass. Uh, Anthony Morfit. I, it was not a typo on my part. His name is in fact Anthony Morfit, which is a um, a new play on the 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 name that we are familiar with, which is Moffitt. We've Indeed. all heard Moffitt. We have not heard Morfit. At least I haven't. So Anthony, apologies on butchering your name, uh, Anthony Morfit. It's Morfit time. Prince of Darkness, uh, John Carpenter movie. We're going to see a whole lot of similarities with the John Carpenter theme um, that uh, in, in Prince of Darkness that we saw in Assault in Pre- Precinct 13, as well as um, The Thing. All right. Uh, John Carpenter has a sweet spot. He has a, an idea, and uh, he doesn't uh, pull back on that that idea of them against us and a uh, small group in a confined space like he does with uh, the Prince of Darkness. Now, here. I might forget this next week when we're talking about the Prince of Darkness. I ca- I picked up on this while watching it. Um, the opening title sequence has a different writer, not John Carpenter. IMDb has John Carpenter as the sole writer. What is that about? Interesting. What is that about? I got to the bottom of this. Caught that. I caught that. I don't know what that's about. Did you write? Did you watch the right movie? I did. I did, Brian. Prince of Darkness. And there were three for me. A lot of bugs. I'm interested to know. I suspect you've seen this because of your son, although. Perhaps it's been banned. Ghostbusters. The girl one? Yes. I saw it in theaters. 2018 is a Ghostbusters. I feel bad about this one because we had Paul Feig on the show, the Adam Carolla show, a few times. Nice guy. Sweet guy. Gregarious. Affable. Talented. Just, what? Talented. Yeah, and he's made some great movies. This was not one. This was a, uh, a bizarre. So here's what I can divine from... Divide. The research I've done on this, which is, I think they intended to make a third Ghostbusters movie as we know it. Bill Murray was dragging his heels on committing and eventually was like, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to do it. So the producers, the studio, were kind of forced to go a different direction mm-hmm. and thus they rebooted it. They're like, yeah, this is in a world where there are no Ghostbusters. These women are the first of their kind. And if you remember all the cameos, were not as Stance and, and, and Egon and whatever. They were, you know, cameos, other characters. Yeah. So this uh, reboot, as it were, puts them in a, their own universe and is totally unnecessary. You know, what would be a, much, a much better storyline would have been like, hey, the guys won't get off their ass. They're, they're just uh, uh, living life yeah. high on the hog because of all their uh, former success or they're, they're resting on the laurels. They lost their it's ass. up to us ladies. We're the ones who have to, you know, our kids are pick out of the up, house. Pick up the mantle. We gotta, yeah, we're going to pick up the mantle here. Instead, they... That would have been a very interesting <clears throat> story. That said, if I recall, some of the effects and some of the, the monsters and ghosts were, weren't bad. I don't remember entirely, but... I don't think this is like an awful movie. I think it was think, scary for my kids. I kid. don't remember this being an awful movie. I just remember being <coughs> so unnecessary. confused. Yeah, exactly. They're like, why are we doing and this? And I remember people really came down with a hatred for it. And uh, yeah, I, didn't I, I think some of that was misdirected and kind of just like uh, almost like a female bashing at, at times. It did feel like this sort of the start of the hating yeah. anything quote unquote woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost it was like the it start of did, it. did crack it. I remember it. Not in groupers. Because I remember it being surprising how much people hated yeah, it's it. It's like, wow, you guys really have a lot of energy uh, yeah. against the ladies over here. Because it felt like that hadn't really happened before in any meaningful way where people were I like, think you're right. I would, I'm, I'm I would kill someone involved with this Fuck movie. You're like, this movie. And part of it is because it comes from such a, you know, a personal space mm-hmm. for so many people's childhood, my, myself and Sure, but it seemed like it was... But I mean, yeah, you, you got to look past the ladies, and the ladies aren't the problem. It's the studio saying, "Hey, we'll just do that exact same thing that's already been done with men, but now we're gonna do it for the ladies," which is just give them like Ocean's fucking eight, eight, same, same thing. Get the, the fuck out of here! Like you know, give the ladies their own thing. They're able to launch something new. You don't have to just like take hustlers. old tired hustlers. Was hustlers a better, fucking yeah. t- even though that was a remake of Goodfellas, it still works. Yeah. Unofficial oh, remake. Huh. It felt so <laughs> Dude, J-Lo fucking crushes in Hustlers. Mm. She's so good. I, I knew a great movie. I enjoy it. Very good movie, yes. Hustlers. All right. Number three for you. No, three yeah. for number, D. Number two for, for D. Uh, Anderson for Des. No, right there, buddy. Come on. Trois for Ma. Anderson Des. Moi. That's how you say I, 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 I am Anderson in uh, ja, ja, Japanese. Anderson Des. How do you say it with the accent? Assault on Precinct 13. I've already spent time talking about it. Uh, the fact that I even saw this. The only reason I saw it is because I like the Ethan Hawke and I love this. I love the original. You assigned it so to So much. Me. The original's fucking died. And it's very rough around the edges, but it's John Carpenter. 
uh, doing what he does uh, on a very low scale uh, budget, but it works. Assault in Precinct 13 is just so, um, what, what is it? High concept. Sure. Right? It's just, yeah. it's just, <laughs> they're, they're barricaded the works inside the precinct and inside there's a bunch of bad people, a bunch of gangs trying to get in. Hey, so good. what's better? The remake of this, which is on your list, or uh, the Frank Grillo movie where they uh, try and get a uh, attack in prison. Bo- was it Boss Level? Was that what it was called? Was that a different one? None of it's ringing a bell. I think Boss Level cop, was Cop dip- Shop. Was it Cop Shop? Was it Cop Shop? I don't know. That, there's like three or four movies that came out that were very, very similar. They all had like fun, fun. But some with fun Toby factor. Huss as Toby the, Huss comes in. Yeah, so yeah. great. I guess Cop Shop. Yeah. Uh, cop Shop. Cop Shop is more memorable. For sure. Even though I couldn't remember the name. And and I said, what was better? A cop Shop. I think you're right. Assault in Precinct 13. Eight. Anyways, that's uh, that's my number three. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, we'll watch the original. Yeah, watch the original. Do yourselves a favor. Right? You like the original. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Limited storytelling. But limited. Limited. Coming up next. Sorry, I know you're browsing for information we requested. Well, that knocked me. I know. Sorry about that. That's what I do best. All right, coming up next. We'll do some Amazon, and then we'll get back to the list after this. You know what? I I don't know if I mentioned this. Anderson, you tell me if I mentioned this or not. But I I often say thank you to everyone who shops on Amazon using our link. That's AndersonandBrian.com. Uh, it helps us. Even if you're you know getting your five dollar item, if you got like a laptop, you know, everything helps. So the point that. I don't know if I mentioned Amazon offers a bonus. Did I say that? I was in the show. Uh, uh, maybe maybe briefly, but. Either way. Uh, if we accumulate over the course of a month a certain number of clicked and bought and paid for and shipped items, and the accumulation of which exceeds a certain amount, Amazon gives us a bonus. So even if you're not, you know, buying a huge big ticket item, hey, it all adds up. Every five, ten, Eleven dollar item on and on and on uh, means something. So we appreciate it. Thank you for thinking of the show. Thank you in advance. And uh, here are the things purchased on the Amazon link at our site, Anderson Boom. Hmm. The thing that jumped out at me is odd, but kind of cool. I figured Anderson would have liked this or would have had this at some point in his life. Someone got from. I gotta turn this on. Where where would you uh, go if you wanted to click through? What, what's the what's the name? AndersonAndBrian.com. There is an Amazon link right there at the top of the page. Costs you nothing. From Veronese Design, there is a chimpanzee scholar bronze statue. This is a little bronze statue of a chimp with a uh, like a graduation cap, mm-hmm. like doing like the thinker pose. And I thought of you. Why would you think of it? Because I just went I to like Snow something. Monkey Island. No, I feel like it was something you would have like in a younger in a younger iteration. I don't know. I, I think that your idea of me is like what Disney <laughs> thinks of a bad kid. <laughs> Other I things include <laughs> four Sonnet <laughs> Thunderbolt card readers, three Brother Toner cartridges in yellow, and three in black. Thank you for buying those. <laughs> I didn't get interested from that at all. As well as a Brother Wireless Compact Laser Printer, two. Sony memory card readers are purchased. A car stereo with Apple CarPlay. Razer Black Widow gaming keyboard was purchased. Sick. Two CF Express memory card readers. 10 up, 20,000 sheets of address labels. Oh, it's 20,000 address labels. Thank you guys for uh, buying those. Lego Ninjago Destiny's Bounty Race Against Time was purchased. I never saw that Ninja- Ninjago. Careful. Ninja, why do you say it? <laughs> Cut his mic. <laughs> I've never seen that. Are you any good? Because I love the uh, the Lego movie. I saw. I love Batman Lego movie. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> OWC Five Port Thunderbolt Hub Two Gator cases, heavy speaker bags. Anderson, meet yourself. I know. Revel Men's excuse me, Revel Mini Smart Oven, any cubic tough, 3D printer resin, Star Wars Unlimited Spark of the Rebellion booster display, Blue Driver Pro Scan tool. Google Indoor Nest Security Cam. Yaki, Yaki. Hair removal device. How dare you? Hair removal device. Merrill Moab Adventure Hiking Shoe 12. Heart Shape Hole Puncher. Uh, Phillips Hue Ghost Mark Table Lamp. Apple AirTag 4 Pack. And someone helped themselves to a new 
brand new ISO Pure protein powder. Ninjago got 56%. I know it wasn't good, it's good. Uh, but we have kids and we like the, the, the Lego. And here are the movies that we clicked through. This is the last time I talked at you all. Somebody clicked through and got Terminator 3. Rise of the machines. Rise of Brian, the machines. Brian, you can't click through our link. No, the version Suicides was clicked through. As well as When Harry Met Sally, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> the Innocence was clicked through. Fuck the S. <laughs> Howard the Duck was clicked through. Fuck that movie. Hey. Fuck that movie. Fuck that no. movie, says Avery. Uh, I like the the old Howard the Duck. Yeah, it doesn't really sound right. I, unwatchable. I like the, the Thomas Dolby song. Unwatchable. <laughs> unwatchable. Blackberry was clicked through. Fuck the S on that. Watchable. After, it's after not, death. It's not that bad. After Death was clicked through, as well as The Taste of Things. I will be clicking through very soon on that. Brian, we should line up on that so we can both uh, click one? fast the, the taste of things. And yeah, you should I'm, be swirling. I'm in. Ooh, the lie. The murder of Grace Milani. I've been thinking about uh, clicking through on this. And apparently the, the hook of this documentary, as my buddy Eric Holmes let me know, uh, while I was in Japan, we actually thought about clicking through it and watching it uh, after Atticus went to bed in Japan. Because uh, the premise is so interesting with this uh, movie, The Lie, The Murder of Grace Milani. I hope I'm saying her name right. Uh, apparently you watch somebody trying to get away with murder <laughs> through surveillance cameras. Oh. And you see everything that they're doing oh my. to try and uh, uh, get away with it. I like and this. it's all tracked uh, because this is real. Yeah, it's wow. a documentary. The lie. It's called. And then Henry was also clicked through, which is a documentary. I have to catch up with this as well. So you oh, I gotta find that. that. The was lie, that, huh? You gotta knock that one out. I gotta watch the Henry, but you already, uh, you know, there's, there's, I'm not gonna bring it to the program because it's not really a movie that needs to be brought to the program, and you already is. have. So I'll watch Henry like on my own. You know what I'm doing right now? What's that? I'm fucking locked in, and I don't have time to be doing this. But I'm finding like tonight, I'm gonna get home at midnight, and you know what I gotta do. I'm going to watch Take My Love, Take My Land, Take Me to I Cannot Stern. I'm watching Firefly, and oh. I'm obsessed. Oh, it's good. I'm flying like a you, good show. It's not like you to get really into something. Eric Robbins, bastard son of a bitch listener, who assigned us the Battle of Changjin. Love my oh. Eric Robbins. He's uh, he, he's on uh, one of the producers on uh, Load of a Bear. I see him all the time. We talk all the time. Uh, Eric's the best. Uh, he assigned me. He... A while ago, over a year ago, he you know, back when I was doing you know chats with Andy and uh, watch-alongs with just me, he assigned me Firefly, but not the entire series. He assigned me like episode one, oh. episode four, and episode you know, like diabolical. And I can't, I, I, I can't. I'm not going to. What do you that. can't do with your newfound love of Rick and Morty. So now I have not watched any more Rick and Morty because I don't have time because it's all about that's, fi that's Firefly. That's a, that's a mistake. Fucking Firefly. So I got three more episodes and then I think he's going to assign maybe both of us or just me, Seren Serendipity. Or it's not Serendipity. Serenity. Serenity. Oh, Serendipity is not bad. Serendipity is pretty good. Yeah. You know, for what it is. But Firefly has got a, uh, a very, very, very uh, a firm place in my heart now. Very enjoyable. Yes, very enjoyable. Not since watching the early... Uh, 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 Mandalorians have I enjoyed my alone time watching TV because I rarely watch TV by, by myself but I'm letting myself for the sake of Eric Robbins and for the sake of of love, you of good of news my love of serendipity life. streaming on Max Brian would you stop taking little threads that were mistaken words and just running off down side streets that's what I bring to the show. <laughs> Good news. Serendipity. Remember when you buy mistakes at Serendipity like 30 seconds ago? Let's run with that. Are we still doing Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> Unclear. Uh, yeah, we're out of here. Uh, back to the program. I really did forget it because I came back to show him. Take my lane. Take my love. Take me where I cannot stand. Marina Bacher in that. Brian, my wife is so upset with me singing that song repeatedly around the house. She can't take it. You've done it twice and I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine what this poor woman is dealing with. What's your number two? Number two for me. I had to dig deep. All right. But it's very bad. Forgotten to history, Strands, you know, for you, and this is probably close to a $100 million movie. Big release. 2001's. Planet of the Apes. Oh, Marky Tim Mark. Burton's man, Marky Mark's Planet of the Apes. A reboot because there had been a number of Planet of the Apes films, and this one's just like, hey, we're going back to the beginning, tell the same story over again. And it was bad. Was it? Okay. Problem, well, one of the main problems was uh, uh, Marky? Mark Wahlberg. And at the time, do you remember, do you remember Estella Warren? 
she was kind of an it girl for a very short period of time. And uh, she was in this movie disastrously, I would say. Mm. She wasn't good. Also, the worst, another problem is the good actors that were in the movie were caked literally with uh, prosthetics and makeup. Isn't so Michael Clark Duncan in this? And so was uh, Giamatti. Like, there's some great actors. Oh, yeah, in he's, like, he's like an orangutan. You can't see, you can't get, see them. Get, get on the Hel- Helena Bottom Carter's in this. You probably can stay on the microphone because audio show. It's on, Tim Roth, I believe, is in this. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, Gary Oldman. And, what's that? Gary Oldman. Is Oldman in this? Yeah. This seems like a watch along. I don't think Oldman's in this. Pretty sure he is. I think Walken might even play one of the monkeys. No. He might. Walken uh, voiced the monkey in uh, the uh, Jurassic, or the uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Jungle Book uh, yeah, 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 yeah. reboot. It's reboot. streaming on the Hulu. Orangutan. Orangutan. It's actually pronounced Orangutan. Okay, streaming on Hulu. All right. Is that a little... Oh, we could have done the Lion King on this. <laughs> Paul Giamatti plays a monkey named Limbo. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> and the worst part is, Giamatti's like, relatively young you know what i mean his yeah. career at this point he's giving it his all he is giving it his all for this movie uh, and it's just going to waste all right number two is this for me is this streaming? is a uh, a movie this is this kind of <clears throat> for me is a, the best example of taking something that absolutely it is worked. on hulu like i said yeah something that absolutely worked in 1974 called the texas chainsaw massacre and remaking it in 2003 rebuilding it and taking all the things that worked in the first one and just saying, eh, we don't need to do those little elements and those little <clears throat> those pieces that, that really freaked you out with like the door slamming and the hammer and just all the, the raw, gritty uh, uh, nature of that first one. We're going we're gonna to smooth it all over. We're oh, going to make it real slick. Awesome. And then we're going to add elements. Like we're going to cut off a leg and then we're going to put salt on the leg. Cause you know, that hurts when you have wound with a salt. Imagine if you have your leg cut off and you get a bunch of salt in there, that's really going to freak out the audience, right? No, no, no. That's not what makes the Texas Chainsaw Massacre so fucking scary. It's not like torturing with salt licks. Is this Rob boots. Zombie? No, uh, this is uh, 2003. There's been so many iterations of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's been so many different versions and sequels. And, but this is the remake that came out in 2003. And my dumb ass thought, oh, you know what? This might be good. They might bring it. Now they got so much technology. It was not brought. Effects. It was not brought. 2003. Yeah. 2003, the, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jessica Biel, I hate it. I hate it a lot. Really? Got a 6.2 on IMDb. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys doing? That's not that high. Stop, Stop it. I feel like they uh, overinflate horror a bit over there. I think maybe they. Well, I don't think the IMDb does. I think people that yeah, the, rate the, the, the Raiders. Yeah. The, ra- the Raiders. Yeah, sorry, I knew it. I, now, now I know what you're saying. I, I took it to me and you meant something else, and I was a fool for thinking that. Okay. Number, number one? Number one for you. Number one for me. Well, unfortunately, you stepped on it inadvertently, but uh, Ocean's 8 mm. is, uh, I had the exact same thought. We probably lined up on this and we flick fest it. Why is this an Ocean's movie? There is no relation in the meat of the movie to the Ocean's, like, story. Like, why not just give the women their own heist movie? Mm. Why does this have to be in the Ocean's universe? You and I did not have the exact same thought uh, on Ocean's 8 when deciding whether or not to go see it. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, you never saw it? No. Whoa, why would I? Why? It's Dude, actually... Kate Blanchett's in it. I have free will, Brian. Lupita's in it. She's in a lot of great things that I don't... Or a lot of things that I don't see. Brian, why would you go see this movie? Did, did your wife have you go see it? Why, why would no, you see this? I think I saw it for Baldywood. Um, Ugh. This is not. I hate every syllable you just said. Uh, this is not. It's not an abject disaster. There are some things that are good about it, but it's hamstrung by the fact that, like, oh, it's an ocean movie. And it's like, why? Why are we doing this? I mean, why Why does this have to be tied to this property? Gary Ross might be the most dull director to ever direct a movie. Director every MC? movie he makes, other than. Yeah, every movie he makes, it's just like. What's he made? Pleasantville. Shall I Listen to all sea these. Sea Hungry Games. Free State of Jones, which I didn't see, but I've heard uh, tough. I've heard tough. Um, wait a minute. If I do an imagine a boring movie, Sea Biscuit seems like it. Pleasantville, Sea Biscuit, Hunger Games, Hunger Games, uh, Free Free State of Jones, and Ocean's Eight. I, I've seen four of those six and uh, Snooze Fest all all the no, way around. Pleasantville is okay. Pleasantville is a snooze fucking fest. Let's see if it's streaming. 
Seabiscuit, like they just have no edge. They have no bite. No teeth. <laughs> no teeth. Seabiscuit is very paint by numbers. It's like it's almost like the tone of my movie is going to be. Mm-hmm. And he achieves it. Yeah. Like so spotlight. Is success. Oh, spotlight. He didn't do spotlight, but Rule. he could have done spotlight with that fucking monotone tone. My friend's uh, husband's favorite movie. Good Are news. you the friend's husband? <laughs> Seabiscuit is streaming. Now, why is that good news? <laughs> what, who, good news. My number one. Speaking Planet of the Apes would be a good would be a good watch along. Except for the fact that it's two hours and twenty one minutes. Yeah, we're not we're not watching that in that monstrosity. God, and that's it is, so dull. It is my number one. Planet of the Apes is and I didn't even like the first one. I, I wasn't a giant fan of the Roddy McDowell you one. You blow it up, God. I was damn I thought when you. I was too young, and you know, I, I, I. But you know, I've since gone back to see it. I should probably well, show my son. Should the, probably show Atticus the, the original. The best thing about Planet of the Apes, the original, is Homer doing it in an episode of The Simpsons. That's the best. <laughs> that we're still in monkeys. Falling yeah. to his knees. I know the apes and apes and monkeys are different, but uh, we're still in monkey season, right? Like, it might be good to to dust off the old original and show it to my son. Sure. You know yeah, what? it's very campy. Avery, I don't want to one up you, but the better. Iteration of that in The Simpsons was the musical. The musical is great. Dr. Like, Zayas, Dr. Zayas. I hate every chimpanzee that I see from Japan A to chimpanzee. <laughs> or every monkey that I see. Yeah. It's Dr. Good. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Well, oh my God, I was wrong. It was Earth all along. It is great. <laughs> so good. That's by far the best iteration. I don't know if I've ever lined up more with Brian. <sighs> So Dr. Zayas talks to this. That's great. I need to watch that clip. Number one for me is, is uh, Planet of the Apes for all the aforementioned reasons. It's can I play the piano and the, anymore? I think the most offensive sure part was well, like before. Planet Apes. <laughs> Planet Apes. Planet of the Apes is such like its own thing. Oh, I must watch this. And for 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 Burton to come in, he's very talented, very you know out of Cal Arts, sure. like he, one of the, one of the all time greats, really in, in in many ways. But for him to try and put. His own spin on it, uh, his own Tim Burtoniness. Uh, one thing that Planet of the Apes does not need is to be Beetlejuiced, right? And it's not like I'm even passionate about Planet of the Apes. I love the new ones. I really do. Like you and I don't see eye to eye on that, but I love War and, and Rise, and I love. All, I can't wait. Oh, they fucking yeah, great. Wait. Fucking love Toby Kebbell just crushing it as Kubo. Is it Kubo? Koba. 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 Oh, fucking Toby Kebbell is Koba. And give me that bad all ape. day long. Bad, bad ape is great. Oh, Jesus so that's Christ. I movie. am invested from beginning to end with those guys. You know what? You can make the case that those are decent reboots. The first one that came out, it was not, that's a prequel. You dumb fuck. Uh, the first one that came out, the prequels. It's all leading up to the planet. But I think they with James Franco told the story different. And Caesar's like you know, re, you know, reveal like you know how his origin story. Uh, I went in there, arms crossed, and like, what, what are you doing, talking monkeys? Yeah, what is this? this I already saw what Tim Burton did to that thing. He just completely and totally decimated. And I, I walked out of there just like crying and just like take the leech off of his neck, you motherfucker! Like, oh, I'm in. And then, I'm in. and then two, and then two of the monkeys. With the, yeah, I even liked War. I, there's not been one of these so far that has let me down. I am pumped. I'm so the, the the <laughs> the season of the monkey continues. Oh, it's good. Monkey season. Monkey season. We're in it. We're deep. I'm two for two. I'm two for two with monkey season. <laughs> Actually, the apes. It's right there on the title. This right. rate, I'm going to six star that shit. You are two for six. two for the monkeys. Okay, so yeah, Planet of the Apes. Six out of five. Six out of five. Just a, an absolute embarrassment. If, if monkey, if if apes were <laughs> monkey, <laughs> if monkey, if apes were a religion, uh, this movie would be sacrilegious. That's a good point. Yeah. And we would all go to hell for having seen it. And thought about that. <laughs> but monkeys aren't. Apes are not a religion, so it's okay. Wait, wait, I'm following. I'm trouble following. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. Let's rock this boat. Out of here. Oh, yeah. We have Lester Top 5. We have Gambling. Avery's watching the Simpsons. Get your paws off me, you dirty ape. He can talk. 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 You watched that uh, Dicks, uh, right. Dicks the Musical. Did I sign you a movie last no. week? I thought you signed him Dicks. I assigned you Dicks, Dick. No, you said we're going to do two from uh, Okay, uh, I, I believe Brian. I hate to say it, but I do. I will watch Dicks if you assign to me. <laughs> I'd probably win this week. Get that drop. I crush. I think get, you actually get, get that drop. You, you need to know what Sewer Boys are. Have you seen week. the trailer? Have you seen the trailer for Dicks? Yeah, in theaters, yes. Oh, you, you ruined it. You just ruined it. But I avert my eyes, though. <laughs> it's true, you do. Do you know so what I've Sewer heard Boys? It. Do you know what the Sewer Boys are? I don't are? know what they look like. See, then you might get the same reaction that the filmmakers were looking I for, might. which was like, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> I might. I might. <laughs> Sewer Boys come out of left field. In a movie that's already coming out of like, you know, left, left center. Field, yeah. Yeah. 
It's in the gap. <laughs> the sewer boys are just like, what am I? What is this? What is happening? Listener list compiled by the Goose. Goose, thank you, buddy. We had 39 submissions. Or 39 not, total movies mentioned. Not too, right. too shabby. How many of them are reboots? Are so, they all different, though? 39 separate reboots? Don't know if that's yeah. possible. I don't know. What am I talking about? Of course it's possible. It probably, happened, it probably could have all come out last month. Tied for fifth. <laughs> He's the man and the thing. What? He's the man? He's the man. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, uh, Karate Kid, that day, uh, that, uh, that a reboot? That's, a reboot. that's. See, I would never, I don't know. Because that I will never, ever, ever. I've never seen that either. Ever. Watch that movie. I was seeing a Reddit thread where people were talking about how the remake is better than the original. Interesting. That's just clickbait. Bold. That's just them. That's a hot take that they're trying to get people talking. It's pretty right. hot. He's Sorry. the man. What was the other one? Oh, wait, wait. He's the man? Yes. That, that's that one where like uh, she he dresses up like a guy, that's, right? She's the man. She's the man. So I think that's, that's Amanda Bynes, yeah. That's the th same thing, right? I, think, she, I, don't know. I think it's a typo. I she's the man it. is a remake or a reboot of She's the I Man from the, six, the 80s. Yeah. What's well, the other movie was talking about? The Thing. What? No. Oh, there was a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the one from like 2008 or something. Yeah, no, yeah, but that's yeah. a that's a prequel, guys. But they kind of, yeah. That's a pre. Fourth. Tied for fourth. Roadhouse and Ghostbusters. Tied for third. Roadhouse and Remake. Robocop and Psycho. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second both place. Both count. Total Recall. Remake. And number one, Far and Away. Point Break. Point. Oh, God, I forgot there was a remake of that. Point break. Wow, that really faded away to history. Trouble. I think you probably watched it, and I think you probably flipped fast. did that oh, come out? I could see Brian. That's totally a Brian movie to flick yeah, fast. 2015. Who was in it? You flick fast it. Who was in this? You I don't think you I flick, did. I, I would imagine you did. Who the fuck are these people? Who is this? Are you offended? <laughs> What's happening? Who, who are these people? All right, I'm... Okay, it started Edgar Ramirez and Luke Bracey. Who, the, who are these people? Have you Steven guys seen Disney's. Soul Man? Ray Winston's in this and Teresa Palmer. I saw, uh, uh, I saw um, Rain Man, yes. Soul Man, Brian. I saw Soul Man too young. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Soul Man? I have Avery, not seen you know Soul, Soul Man. Man I know of Soul Man. Let's see. Are we, are we gonna, Soul Soul I, Man. I live Soul Man. Soul Man is not streaming because that'd be a great watch along. Some people have accused me of soul manning. You are you you soul man <laughs> down the street every day. <laughs> what? Soul man. This would be a great watch along, and the fact that this movie ever there has ever a time where this movie was okay for the masses is, is shocking, shocking. I, I think I've played uh, clips on the on the show and brought it to the program in one form or another, but ah, I wish that was streaming. He like does he it. does look blacker than me. I'll give him that. So, <laughs> see Thomas Howell. <laughs> in Soul Man, yeah. I guess in Soul Man, once he gets his tan. <laughs> the whole premise of Soul Man is he wants to go to college but because of like affirmative action. He wants to go like Harvard or something. Yeah. The only way he can go is if he's uh, if he pretends to be, passes as black. So uh, he, and like oh, there's a scene where like he's, he goes up to his friend, his buddy, his very, very white buddy, who's like jogging and is, uh, what was it? It was, something, it, was, it was some kind of mugging joke that happened that was just like, oh, isn't that funny? He thought he was going to yeah. get mugged because he thought it was a black this guy. This movie is so offensive. My, my buddy had uh, went on after me at a comedy show and he said, uh, Avery is not black. He's half white and half tan. <laughs> <laughs> so he's yeah. lying to all of us. Brian, if it's so offensive, why do you still have the frame poster in your room? You should probably take Soul Man down. Fine. Why is it signed? <laughs> why is it signed by the Soul Man? <laughs> all right, let's go. Gambling. This week, uh, last week we gambled on Monkey Man. Monk. Uh, Anderson gets 84. Brian gets 78. With 201 reviews. The actual Rotten Tomato score is 88. Low. Uh, Making well, Anderson like the winner. All right. <clears throat> Do I see Dex? Yeah, it's, uh, go watch the Dex, yeah. Go watch Dex, the musical. Avery, you should watch it as well. I have not assigned it to you, but if you have time, you can find it streaming. Is it streaming? How long is it? Uh, it's it, short. I thought it was on like Max. An hour and Isn't twenty it? or something. Dicks, the musical. Is it Don't on I yawn in my presence? Yeah, it's on, it's on Max. Hour twenty six. Oh, that's that's easy. Yeah, dicks. And I think you guys, especially you know, with your love of the uh, <laughs> the, the, the Simpsons, Planet of the Apes musical, you were just enjoying I can so sing. much. Uh, there's some there's some good musical numbers in this one. You right? Know, very offensive. Very offensive. Very offensive movie. In the best possible way. No, it's going to girl Megan the Stallion. Let's talk some sewer boys next week, kids. All right, well, let's I'll do this. Apparently, I have to. Megan the Stallion is uh, very good in this. She crushes. Everyone crushes in this movie. It's very fun. Let's do it. Fun. The Dicks. The Dicks, the musical. This week, we're gambling on 
Civil War. Oh, yeah. I got my ticket. <sighs> I don't know what to make of this movie. I think I have a number, but uh, I'm ready. Oh, God, Jesus. Oh. Oh. Brian just knocked over his water and directly onto the board. Poured everything on the, on the board. That would have been bad. Do I sound better? <laughs> Disastrous. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Uh, are you ready on three? I'm wondering if there was a factor in... Anthony Morfitt has signed as Prince of Darkness. Let's go. I don't know. This is a remake of the original Civil War. Oh, okay. The, the, the Ken it's Burns. not a reboot of... <laughs> yeah, the Ken Burns <laughs> Civil War. It's actually, it was originally called Gettysburg, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, let's take that into, into consideration. Also... It's hi highly influenced by Oh God, You Devil. <laughs> Avery, you mentioned earlier, will this be review bombed as like woke... Oh, on IMDb, like by random listeners or the, the by tomatoes, like the Rotten Tomato, the, the people that all, that all love uh, I Am A, What Is A Woman? If they're out there. I don't know how many are out there. I think most uh, critics are sniveling uh, a liberal snowflakes. All right, I have a number, and I've had a number for a while before pondering it out loud. Stop po pondering and just come up with a number. All right. But there's a hundred of them. Do you remember his last? Do you remember his last? No, uh, hundred one. Hundred one. Yeah, there was, I was going to do the exact same thing, <laughs> Brian. I'm becoming you. This is terrible. Oh, oh my god! Quick little end of the end of the show story. Went out on a whim, this like you do sometimes. Good. You became Brian. I uh, went to. I don't know why I got to go into details, but we went to Maria's kitchen, which you know it's a. Sure. It's like Brian, don't. <laughs> Did this is C. You should have seen him kind of like just pass, like, yeah, okay, sure, yeah. It's 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 Italian, I guess. It's a step up yeah, from Olive Garden. If you're feeding a kid, sure. The yeah. wife loves it's it. It's like Chuck E. Cheese it's for well, adults. Your wife so effectively. It is what it is. I don't, I'm not an Italian palate. food guy, so I don't really care. No, their eggplant parm is fucking they got, great. They got the, uh, the booth, sir. Sure. Not, that's not the point. The point is this I got shamed by the wife for giving thumbs up to everyone. And no. I'm still sick. What's wrong? I'm still tired. I'm still kind of like out of it a little bit. Still, right now I am a little bit. I'm still recovering. But I, I was definitely a couple days ago when we were at Maria's, and I didn't know I was doing it. She's like, you just double thumbed up that waiter wow. for bringing bread. Stop with the thumbs up. It's embarrassing. I'm like, I'm doing thumbs up? She goes, all the time today. I don't know what's going on with you. I'm going to be prouder of you. And I'm, I'm like, honey, you're feeling exactly the same <laughs> anger that I get with Brian all the time. Please tell me you dropped on her. Thumbs or what? <laughs> I did not. I did not. Well, in honor of monkey season, what separates us from the apes. He's like, it's what's, it doesn't separate us from the apes. The apes have opposable thumbs, Brian. So that's I know. wrong. That's why it's funny. Apes do, and you know who else does? Mm. The old uh, raccoons over there. That's right. Well, five finger bastards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do gambling and get the fuck out of here. All right, on three. One, two, eighty-one. Sixty. Oh, Jesus Christ! I think you're absolutely right. I think that this is going to be like uh, very politically um, divisive. charged, divisive, and I think there's going to be some things that even like I think both sides are going to be like, really? What did you guess, Brian? That's what I'm guessing. Uh, way lower, uh, sixty. No, I said sixty-one. You said eighty-eight. Eighty-four. 84. I said, no, it eighty-four. 86, eighty-six. How did you? How did you give me three different answers? Yeah, I know. That's bizarre. <laughs> Brain tumor or not, that's bizarre. Uh, it's late now, brain tumor. We can check the tape, but I'm pretty sure it's 86. Anderson gets 61, Brian 86, with 42 reviews. Current Rotten Tomato score is 93%. My Christ. I hope you win this one, because I want this to be good. I need this. And fucking Plemons is it's haunting so in his one little in the scene. Trailer, yeah. My God, is that man just made of tension. I hope he's in one scene in the movie. It's I hope he's in th every scene of the but movie. But I'm saying, wouldn't it be impactful if he was in one? Yeah, but I want him in more. With those those goofy glasses, whose choice is that? Does he bring those well, to the set? Those are those are those? Uh, those are tactical uh, like shooting glasses. Oh, that makes it that's fun. No, it makes it well. I mean, you can say it's fun or not, but it's like the like people who like our uh, paramilitary. I get it now. Yeah, I get it. But I thought it was just a quirky uh, uh, trait that the character oh. had the the weird fun funky glasses. I believe they're for shooting. I don't want them to be that, Brian. I want him to just be that guy. Well, maybe we're wrong. Maybe I want him to, you know, he's wearing those uh, get lunch. Out, he's wearing right? those at parties. Uh, right. He's probably wearing those at parties. He probably is. Yeah. Maybe yeah. right now he's wearing those. Let's get those. I'm surprised. Lemon's lost all the weight. He's all no, thin again. Really? Yeah. It, it, did you see the trailer? We're talking about the trailer. Yes, but he's wearing fatigues. You can't he's see. He's thin. Really. He's felt. He's back. Not that there's anything wrong with you know heavy plummets. He doesn't worry about his heart. Are we getting out of here? I don't know what to do. I don't know. Where I feel like we're, we're, the show should be moving. The show's that towards coasting to a stop. All right. Avery notes. Uh, yes, why not? Oh, 
Really? Civil War? I mean, I'm excited. I want it to be good. I want to love this movie. Uh, uh, California and Texas, I hope that makes perfect sense by the time I walk out of that theater. It must, right? I mean, there are a lot of very, very uh, conservative parts of California, obviously. Oh, yeah. But it's still a very blue state, so. <laughs> okay, Brian, this is not fun for anyone. Well, it's already got 1,400 reviews on IMDb, and it's sitting at a pretty healthy 7.6. All right, this is good things. Good things. Alex Garland, you've only let us let me down one time so far. With and the rest has been holy fuck. You need and to watch Debs. I know. Limited series I know. on Hulu. I know. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If oh, I start I doing this and start watching TV shows on my own, which I get it, the comfort food that is, I talk a lot of shit about series, but there's something so comforting about going back to the same characters and knowing that they're waiting for you for a whole new adventure. If I start doing that on my own on a regular basis, my 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 marriage is over. <laughs> Give me an existential crisis. Damn. So, it changed know, the world the way I thought about the universe. Now I'm seeing here Almost this uh, great art from Jonathan Oxor and the listener art for this week. I'm seeing a very layered take on uh, Dune Part layered 2. Take. But I feel like this is the work of a man who was bored during the movie. His mind watered quite a bit. Because there's a lot going on. There's a lot. He gave us a comic book. Who's to say that he did it while the movie was on? No, no, you did afterwards, but I think you thought of all Oh, this. I see, I see. Jonathan, great work as always. Check it out. Andersonandbrian.com. Blue Winter is our feature artist this week. Check it out. <coughs> Andersonandbrian.com. That's where you go for the Amazon link that I mentioned before. Let's go ahead and tap that. Do your shopping. Thank you in advance. Uh, what are we doing? Steve Morris, thank oh, yeah, you. We did talk about him cannonballing into that, that pool of water. <laughs> uh, yeah, he thought about this after he saw the movie because we talked about it. That's true. Yeah, yeah you got me there. <clears throat> John Lord, I take back everything I said. Anderson and Brian is the website. Anderson and Brian is the Instagram. Anderson and Brian is the TikTok. The Film Vault's on Facebook. The Film Vault's on Twitter. The Film Vault Podcast. It's a book for dummies. Over there on YouTube. Being on YouTube. Thanks, sir, Kath, for uh, populating that with uh, new content. Speaking of content, Drake, kill it kill on social media. Thank you, Drake. Giovanni, appreciate you. Mike yeah, Cole and also, Goose, appreciate you guys for all you do. All sorts of really fun things are happening over on our social media that have not been happening ever, really, with a parental guidance game. It's a game. real left turn. Yeah, oh, there's, yeah. there's all sorts of uh, really fun things that if you like the show, you like the spirit of the show, and you like movie talking, and you like the community, there's plenty of things to be active with and have fun with during your day at work over there to waste a little bit of the boss's time. So get over there, engage, have fun, enjoy. Follow along. Subscribe. Some good stuff over there. Smash I would definitely do that. Yeah, once, is, you're, is, once, you're, once you're done with work, come to Comedy Confessional. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Which returns Friday. You can get tickets on Instagram at Confess Comedy, 8 p.m. at the Crow in Santa Monica. And they say they sell booze now. Well, they're, they're selling fast. You were so, telling me. So uh, get on good, that, yeah. Uh, tickets are almost gone. We're looking so, at a sellout. And Florence Brummer will be there. She will Ooh, be. Ooh, nice. She will be there. Enjoy, Florence. Thank you, Stephen Morris, for the assignments. Plural. And uh, check out our Patreon. We have a top five, or some, we have a uh, uh, spoiler edition for um, Monkey Man. Monkey Man! Monkey you know what Man. I was really worried about and bracing myself for was them playing this uh, Rolling Stone song. Thank God they didn't. I was afraid they were going to do that like in the, tr in the, in the wow. credits or something. That would have been bracing. I was afraid. No, they played some fun songs. They did have some decent songs. All right. All right, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And until next we time. We do it for Van Gogh.